you scared me. You scared. I thought you were jumping out the blinds. I was like, he's going to pull a magic <laughs> trick like a Scooby-Doo and come through the door after going out the window. <laughs> yeah, we, we go in, we go in, I'm gone. <laughs> That's how we're starting. Yeah. Uh, right, let's just give it a sec, make sure everything kicks in. Uh, YouTube seems to be on, kick seems to be on. So, hello. Yo, yo. Hey. How's everyone doing? Magnificent as always. Doing great. Excited to be here. Cool. Well, we, let's let's get let's get subtle introduced first, and then we can then we can uh, address chat and do the normal intros and stuff. But as we're all here, do you want to do you want to fire away? Go. Let's get the guest yeah. in, get, get the guest introduced and invited in style by you, because I'm sure you've got so, a full script prepared, ready to read off. Surely. Oh, yeah. 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 Let me just pull out my notepad here. So. Okay. Uh, there's there's not many people that play World of Warcraft the same way I enjoy playing it, which is a solo game as an MMO. And if you're looking to figure out how to solo bosses, uh, current bosses, current dungeons, th that's one of my favorite things to do. And this guy is the the paladin master of that and other classes as well, right? Like DK maybe too, right? Warrior. I'm just getting into DK now. Yeah, I've played a lot of yeah. Warrior though too, probably. Yeah, but if you're looking for any sort of paladin uh, tanking information, this guy's the biggest brain of the biggest brains in that area. So, Subtle, thanks for coming on with us today to talk about paladin, prop paladin in Cataclysm Classic. Hey, thank you for having me. That's an amazing introduction. Thanks. It sucks um, that it's excited. taking this long. Uh, yeah, we, we, should have had you, <laughs> we should have had you on long, long ago, but obviously because we've been focusing on Season of Discovery and you haven't. <laughs> like, i have not yeah i'm totally out on it yeah me me mm, not goes not mm, I, i'm i'm kind of on the fence but we'll get into that when we do a little bit of a just a, a warm-up chat before we get into talking about paladin and we talk about what we're doing and everything at the moment um but yeah obviously so amazing to have you here and he hello everyone in chat this is going to be Mark my words, this is going to be the best class episode of all the Cata podcasts. I, I, I guarantee, because this is one that I'm really passionate about. I know Subtle is very passionate about, and obviously then Go will occasionally say something stupid, we'll mock him and we'll move on. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it's going to be pr it, pretty sick. It might sick. make me level a paladin, because uh, I've been looking and trying to scratch my itch of soloing stuff, and like, what better class than a paladin? Like, so come on, give me a give me a reason. It doesn't have to be a big one to dip my foot into that pool, and I might do it. We'll get you there. We'll get you there by the end of this. Perfect. That's <laughs> what we like to hear. Uh, okay, do you want to do some general housekeeping? Go like you always do because you're so good at it, and I'll stand here and drink drink gin and look. I was going to say pretty, but that'll be bullshit. I'll just stand here. Let me uh, turn to page two of my notepad, and on that page I've got. Uh, Can we have a look at your know. notepad? Can you put quite, it in front of the camera? Uh, code? So we can see that you've actually got a no. notepad. Damn it! You I was hoping you'd out. hold up. I, I was hoping you'd hold up a Bible or something. <laughs> Just something like, whatever, whatever's in yeah, front of I you. Keep that right next to me when I'm playing. You, yeah, you I reference it all the time. You strike yeah. me as the sort of guy who, if you're putting yourself through the pain and suffering of incursions and playing Soft Phase Three, I'd imagine you read the Bible while you're doing it, just to just to liven things up a little bit. You know, that's that's what I'm not, I was. I'm definitely praying the whole time I'm playing. But oh shit! I'm, sorry, I'm not, I'm not reading the gospel now. <laughs> I, ju I just realised I'm going to anger everyone in the comments and I because I'm talking about season of discovery during a cat podcast. I'm assuming on the basis I talk about cat during the sod podcast, they will get angry. I'm guessing the the opposite would would happen now. But so that'll be the last time I mention season of discovery until the next time, which it won't be long. Uh, I mean, the only housekeeping really is if you would like to help support the show that Scotty and I try to do at least twice a week, uh, Wednesdays for Season of Discovery, not Saturdays. Scotty, stop talking about it. And then Saturdays for Cataclysm, then uh, you can show your support by hitting the super chat button or the super thanks if you're watching the VOD back and uh, give us a little, little shout out. Give us a question during the show. Uh, I even go back through and read the comments afterwards up to like a week after the show. So if you've super thanks, well, uh, we'll reply to that as well. So yeah, send us in the questions and we'll, we'll answer. You you could also just to add on that, cause that was great go. Obviously that was great, but you could also join the channel as a member. So you can see the super frequent members only content that I put out. Cause I would say I, I put at least 
maybe three videos a year on for members only. So, I mean, you've got, you, you got to be a member for a long time to catch it at the right time. But it does, it does happen sometimes. Got to throw that out there. There's no point being a member, by the way. But let's just be honest. It's pointless. <laughs> you get the emotes. You get the you emote, get the yeah. Scotty J emote, yeah. Oh, with, with the best of intentions, I always think, like, I really want to give back to the members and put members-only videos on. But then it's like, I do it, and I'm like, but I want everyone to see this. You know, like, it's like, I've, I've just I've just set the time to do it. I kind of want, like, everyone to see it. I might start doing members-only see it first or something. I don't know, maybe at some point. But that's not really going to benefit Go, because he, he won't get any of that money. <laughs> get, get, your, <laughs> get your hands off my membership, son. I mean, anytime I see somebody in, because uh, I stream on YouTube, so anytime somebody comes in with that Scotty J icon, I'm like, this guy is a legend. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, right, cool. Okay, so let's get the, uh, now we've got the, the the general housekeeping out of the way. Let's do a little bit of a, 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 a nice breaker. You know, let's, let's warm subtle into it and find out a bit more about him. I've got some questions, so like you know, we can we can grill him like we do every guest on on the first time. Don't worry, it's not going to be that awkward. Um, so go, go on, um, start it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, how long have you been playing World of Warcraft and uh, Classic in particular, and what versions of Classic and like retail modern have you played? Uh, so I started with the stress test for Vanilla WoW. So that was like a few months, I think, before Vanilla WoW actually came out in 2004. So that's where I began. Started on a Shaman, pretty quickly went Rogue after that. Saw all these Undead Rogues running around, and I was like 13 at the time. So I was like, that is, Undead Rogue is the coolest thing I've ever seen as a 13-year-old. And uh, yeah, just played tons of Vanilla, uh, tons of TBC, a lot of wrath uh i played a lot at the very beginning of kata and then took a break for a while played a lot of mop and then didn't really play too much after that um as far as classic though uh started right when uh classic came out i've been playing the entire way through since then uh really been liking it because like anything i missed out on last time like last time i didn't get to clear sun well in tbc I didn't get to kill like uh Saf and KT back in vanilla uh and four horsemen. Um just things like that, like getting to, you know, make up for a lot of style, I guess, and uh finish the things I never completed back in the day. That's been kinda cool. I tell you what, it's funny, subtle, that, that everyone's well not everyone's, but everyone of a certain age group, their story's like the same. You know, where it's like, yeah, yeah, played at Vanilla from a young age, played TBC, played Wrath, Kata came out, and it was like, yeah, I'll come back for Moth. You know, it was like, it, it, I don't know, it's weird. Uh, like, because I, I, I do think that contributes to Kata getting a bad name. Like, there was a sub drop-off, but it was because, I don't know, maybe by that point, we was all tiring of WoW a little bit. Like, it was less about the content and more about, we've just been playing this game for like six years. Like, there's other things to do, other things to play, maybe real life getting in the way, whatever. Um, but mine is very similar, apart from you actually played vanilla before me, and and I'm older than you, which is which is which that's worrying. How you you was playing the vanilla stress tests? Uh, I was on City of Heroes, uh, and two guys I played with in the guild on City of Heroes was like, we're getting this new World of Warcraft game, and then I had to get convinced to get it. So I like I started playing maybe three or four days after launch. Um, but my like how that story went was exactly the same as yours. Like halfway through Kata, I'd say probably after Firelands, I was like, whatever happened, I stopped playing and then came back like for the mop pre patch and then played through to Legion. Um, but it's weird. Our, no matter what, and Go will probably agree. Whatever guest we get on, and whenever we talk about Kata, that Cataclysm is, is a bit more appealing to people be, like that enjoy this style of WoW. Because for whatever reason they didn't play it very much. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I, you guys were playing other games, uh, or Scotty was. You were playing the vanilla thing. I can't even remember what that was now. The vanilla, what, what was it called? Like the pre uh, the, the stress test. The stress test, yeah. Yeah, you, it you was just like test. basically beta, but they had uh, they gave it to everybody for like one weekend to just try to like slam the servers and make sure they were going to be like ready for launch. 
And I was playing Halo 2 BXRing noobs on, uh, I can't remember a Halo map. I wish I could have right then. <laughs> <laughs> I remembered BXR was like the the combo that you could hit to like have a faster reload or something like that back in Halo. So yeah, I was, I went from Halo into vanilla and then went all the way through beginning of WAD, I think. And then I was like, eh, I'll come back for classic. <laughs> was there anything you was playing while Kata was out, subtle, or was it like you was done with MMOs at, at the um, time? Or? Yeah, I I just wasn't playing too many games at that point. Like I was in school and different, you know, real life things happening. And um, at the same time, too, like my guild fell apart uh, in Kata, and like I, you know, didn't want to find a new guild or couldn't find one at the time, whatever. And yeah, so um, actually my guild, uh, they stopped raiding because I think it was Aeon. Uh, there there was like this series of like supposed like wow killers that came out. Like there was this few year stretch. It was like Aeon and Rift and uh, some other ones. Wildstar, and, Girl I, Republic. I, yeah, Wildstar. Um, it was either Rift or Aeon. I can't remember which one, but yeah. Um, yeah, uh, that one, like, it took my whole raid. And then, I mean, they all played it for, like, two months and then quit. But our guild was, like, dead by that point. So, yeah, it was a bummer. So it, it's funny that I've just... It's taken this long to actually realize why I stopped playing at Firelands and Catter and came back for the mop pre-patch. Firelands launched on the 28th of June, 2011. Uh, Star Wars Your Republic launched on the 20th of December 2011. So I would have been doing Firelands for about five months. But then before that, probably for a couple of months, I'd have been on the Star Wars Your Republic beta. Uh, and then I, so that actually makes sense. I've only just realized why I missed a chunk of Kata. And it was, it would have been Star Wars Your Republic because obviously our whole WoW guild originally left, like we'd been a, a WoW guild since like the beginning of TBC. Uh, so we've done all TBC together, all RAF together, all the way up to Firelands together, and then our entire guild moved on to Star Wars Your Republic and then went back for Mr. Pandaria. I know this is not like, this is about subtle, this section, it's not about me, but I've just looked at the dates and it actually makes sense exactly what happened. Yeah, I remember I, I was playing uh, Old Republic too, and a um, bunch of the WoW people I was playing with all hopped onto it as well during that time i couldn't really remember like when that came out but yeah yeah i guess that would be another factor then yeah and it was oh, such a good time uh go can we start a star wars the old republic podcast at some point please uh that'd be great uh you, you've got your brother for that right oh <laughs> uh, yeah 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 okay yeah you're my brother from another marvel Aww. from another continent <laughs> i mean we all kind of have a little bit of the same you know, facial scruffiness so yeah we, we could all be brothers what do you mean scruffiness i had a shave three weeks ago I haven't sh obviously I haven't like shaved or trimmed up. I was going to today. I like my mustache is ridiculous right now. It is I'm eating it every time I'm having something to snack on. You you was it's you was, too much. You was busy doing incursions and Zolfuric for about Yeah, yeah. I didn't, 12 hours. I didn't have time. Uh right, cool. Uh so subtle, what are the um like the, the key in RAF, like what are the key classes you play? Obviously I know you're a, you enjoy wearing a, sh a shield. Um, but like, what are you, are you raiding on Raph at the moment? And if you are, what are you actually raiding on? Yeah, I try to do as many Wrath raids as I can, but unfortunately they're kind of dying out. A lot of the raids I had before just kind of stopped happening after Sod came out and we've, you know, had six months of ICC at this point. But currently I'm uh, raiding on two prop pallies, maybe three. Or, yeah, two prop eyes, I think, a week right now. And then uh, Blood Decay. Um, I might be doing another Blood Decay soon just to kind of get that ready for Kata. We'll make sure I have, like, the pre gear just so I can, you know, get the early head start. I know it gets replaced, like, immediately. But, you know, just to sort of get ahead of the pack and have some fun in pre-patch. But I, I've been playing a lot of Prot Warrior throughout Wrath. But I the rate I was taking that one, too, that kind of died so yeah but basically pro warrior blood dk prop eye those are the main ones and what what is do you it, think oh, you, sorry go go on, go on 
is it are they all horde are they all alliance is there a mix like do you have a preference all for horde. each faction all horde. perfect yeah I yeah mean, you um, see the yeah i got the yeah, I, it's alliance oh, yeah. over here but I, it's covered up by the backpack oh, yeah. from blizzcon so yeah, yeah. i got yeah. the red <laughs> yeah um i played like an alliance pally for a little bit in phase two on bandiction but that was basically the only alliance stuff i've done I guess like all of classic, I think. So yeah, pretty pretty much horde all the way. Yeah. Have you done much on private servers? All right, enough about horde and alliance. Fuck me, he's horde. <laughs> Just no one cares about you, go. <laughs> I, I forget when I switched. It was like Easter time. Like oh, he's just going to carry ago. on. He's just going to carry on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care. You, you can try to stop me. Yeah, he, I, I've heard he's been very argumentative since last <laughs> night. But um, so <laughs> small niche amount of people know what I'm talking about. Uh, so no, have, you, have you done much on Cata? Like, did you play private servers? Have you? Because it's a safe space. We, you know, you can talk about that here. Yeah, um, so last spring, I played for a few months on White Man. Um, played uh, Blood Decay, Prop Valley, a little bit of Prop Warrior, leveled Feral Druid like partway, so I got like a little feel for that. But um, yeah, I didn't do a whole lot, though. I did like all the ra Phase 1 raids like normal mode with a few heroics sprinkled in. Um, the main thing I wanted to do was like compare prop value to blood decay and just see how the difference felt and blood decay felt pretty damn good. <laughs> it, it feels, it feels nice. Um, yeah. Uh, just like the control you have over your survivability compared to prop value was like kind of insane. Um, it feels like more of a retail tank. Cause I don't know if you played retail lately, but that's kind of the way they design retail tanks is you just have like tons of control over like self-healing and things like that. But yeah, I uh, play, played them a decent amount, like did tons of heroics and some of the raids. So yeah, a little bit of experience, but not a ton. Yeah, that's, that's interesting you said that. Again, like as someone who's just a super experienced tank, you know, like bloody, <laughs> mate, it's fucking broken. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, we, you know, there's fights, um, you know, like, if we go forward a tier. Like, in the first tier, I, I, I honestly think, yes, Blood DK is still overpowered in a in a 4.3.4 .4 state, even in the first tier. But I do feel like the bosses are, are, are not um, as tank-reliant as when you get into Firelands. Um, and, like, we, we've had our Blood DK in on Shannox Heroic, just solo tank, like, 40-plus stacks. Uh, you know, you know, which literally a tank would ordinarily just be dead in two seconds, but they're doing so much self healing. It's like they'll be beating the holy paladins, they'll be beating the dis priests. You know, they're literally not only tanking the boss, they're out healing the healers, and even on Bal Balrock as well to a certain extent. Well, to a to a big extent, um, it 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 concerns me a little bit actually. Like that's somewhere where I would like to see if we were to talk about changes for Kata. I'm not like I'm not anti DK. Like obviously, if they're if they're ridiculously overpowered and they've got all of that 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 self sufficientness like constantly, and it, it'll be great. But then everybody's just going to run a DK tank as their main tank, which then sort of ruins it a little bit. You know, I, I think I'd like to see a little bit of change, and not even buffing the other tanks, but maybe just making DKs a a little bit weaker. Man, I'm going to get hated on by DKs, but. And next week, uh, we're going to deep dive DK with no guests because nobody wants to come on. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to just see them elevate other tanks to like the DK level. I think generally it feels bad to like nerf a class rather than just bring other classes up to like that level, unless it's like way out of control. It didn't feel to me like DK was like super out of control. It was just like clearly better than everything else, but not like so crazy that it would need a nerf but like for uh like pro Warrior in particular i think there's like really easy ways they could bring it up because they have a talent where like uh when they devastate something below like i think 20 percent hp they like uh get to use victory rush but it heals for less something like that you could just make that proc at any percent hp like not confined to 20 percent hp so just things like that i think you could change around to help out other tanks um 
Prop A specifically too, I'd like to see like Word of Glory have no cooldown because then you have a talent on like the first tier where it's like you have a chance to make Word of Glory like not consume Holy Power. So that's a pretty lackluster talent on its own, but if it opened up the possibility to like spam some Word of Glory if you got lucky and stuff like that, I think that'd be kind of cool. And then anytime you just generate a lot of Holy Power, you could choose to Word of Glory more. I think both of yeah both of those like instantly and then, and then yeah if you were to actually do both of those changes for warrior and did you did you think about this before we went live because that that like that if that um, was just off the fly I mean, that's this impressive is something I, I I talk about this stuff all day long on stream and stuff so like it's stuff I've been thinking about for sure yeah but that would that would massively help yeah for the self sustainability as a tank like. Yeah, word of glory not having a cooldown in protection spec specifically, like that would be, yeah, that would be pretty insane. Uh, the the prop warrior, I've not played a great deal of prop warrior. You know, I, I've played a lot of arms warrior, uh, but not a lot of prop. So that talent, yeah, I'm not that familiar with. But yeah, if you could, yeah, that 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 would be fair. Like balancing the other tanks or like just yeah, bringing them up a little bit to the DK level. Uh, it just does get quite depressing as a healer when on a single target boss, you're getting out healed by the tank. That, that, that's the yeah, only thing. It, it, so it is a little bit deceptive too with the blood DK because um, like with the black tanks, they block, you know, 31% of the damage with the meta gem or like 51% when Holy Shield's active or if it's a crit block, 62% of the damage they block. That damage doesn't show up on the healing meter. All the things that blood DK does does show up on the healing meter so like the absorb the heal so it's a little bit misleading because like if all that block damage showed up on the healing meter uh prop and power would look a lot different too but yeah. i mean like blood decay is insane like don't get me wrong but when you're just looking at healing meter it is a little bit deceptive just because of the way just because of what that's actually recording so with that said um, so if we were just just to assume that everything stayed the way it is, you know, w would DK be your main? I know you're probably going to have multiple characters that you play um, almost equally. Yeah, but... yeah if, if everything stays as is, uh, Blood DK is going to be the main for sure. Um, I, like, my, my goals are to, like, clear the raids week one. So, like, on Heroic, so I just have to play whatever tank is the best, basically. And Blood DK is that tank right now. Yeah, is that twenty five or ten that you're going for? Um, I'm actually trying to do both. Um, I am gonna be doing twenty five really hard, and I'm gonna have a second blood DK. That I'm gonna be doing ten really hard on. So goal is to get both of those cleared week one. But you know, you never know what will happen. But I, I, I'm pretty confident we can get that done. What about PVPing at all? Because as soon as you started talking about how much uh, like healing power that DKs had, I think it reminded me of how insane they were in like two v two arena and how frustrating yeah. it was. Like just how much self healing that tanks in general had in arena and match it with a healer, and it, those matches would take so long. <laughs> but oh, yeah, God, have, yeah, have you they done, were the worst. Do you plan on doing or have you been doing a lot of PvP um... in in classic? I haven't in classic. Uh, historically, I was like an arena rogue, though. That was like the thing I did, like from you know TBC when it came out through like early Cata when I quit. And honestly, Cata was the best time to be a rogue. Like it was incredible. Subtlety rogue, early Cata. They gave us like smoke bomb. They gave us recuperate. Um, they gave us all these like new reworked like a bunch of the talents we did way more damage uh that was like the era of like rec full two rec full three like rogue hype was at an all-time high during that time it was just such a cool time to be a rogue and yeah i i went really hard on arena like uh phase one of Cata, like before i quit i got up to like rank one 2v2 but they didn't give gladiator titles or anything um at that point in Cata, they i think they took that away in wrath the original go um and then i got up to like rank five and three v three before i quit but yeah that's kind of the peak i got to and then i kind of quit and 
then yeah, I haven't really done too much PvP since then. And I plan to get back into it in TBC Classic, but it I just couldn't find the right partners for it. And so I was like, eh, I'm just gonna start playing a prop hack because I don't need to play rogue to get gear to do arena anymore. So let's just play what's fun and yeah, the rest is history. I was tuning into your stream the other night and I think you had mentioned that it was like open world. I guess you play on a PVP server and like you would just melt down like five people at a time, like no problem. Yeah. And I was like, that sounds insane. <laughs> Dude, on Prop A and Wrath, like you can ju just cleave down players if they aren't like, like skilled or like, you know, PVP geared, whatever. If they don't really know what they're doing, like you can just cleave them down like they're a trash pack in a raid. Like, like you just hammer the wretches, consecration, like you just AOE everything down. And um, I have a good clip. It might be on my YouTube, maybe on my Twitch, but uh basically I was just going to Ukard Pinnacle to do my like blue proto farm. There were like eight alliance outside. They started attacking me. So then I fought back and I actually killed them all because like I mean, they weren't super geared. I, like, I was a really, really geared prop alley. I just kind of, you know, could two shot anybody I got to. And yeah, just stuff like that's like really fun on a tank. Just like people are like, people just pick on you because they're like, oh, I saw prop alley. There's eight of us and one of him is just a tank. We can, we can take this guy. And then they don't understand. Like they're about to get wrecked. Like, like the things prop I can do in world PVP to people that like aren't expecting it, especially melee. Uh, it, it's fun. It's fun. I know it's Scotty funny. You said a lot of world PVP. <laughs> yeah. <when he's laughs> on am right? Like the fresh server. Yeah. Like, that I've is... never seen this guy have so much fun in the open world PVP. <laughs> I, I'm so glad you said threat, that. Yeah? Cause that no, it's prop. No, yeah, but that was literally what oh, I was about prop? to say. Yeah. So, um, obviously when Raph launched, I went fresh cause fresh is best. Um, so yeah, I was on Feckle, and obviously, yeah, we cleared everything fucking day one. Like, obviously, yeah, decently geared prop pally. Um, I would, I'd go to Sholazar and I'd find a titanium ore. I mean, this is how sad I was. Like, it is sad when I say it out loud. It's sad, but I was hackling like a fucking mad old witch. You know, I was enjoying myself. I'd stand at a titanium vein and pretend to be AFK as a prop pally, and I'd wait for someone to land and try and mine it, and then I'd one shot them. You know, with like fucking trinkets, yeah, like I, um, yeah, you know, like throwing my shield, like, but, but everything together, I could literally kill someone in like two seconds. Like th there was nothing they could do yeah. to counter it. Yeah, mate, that was fun. Like literally, I'd sit there for like ten hours on stream, just standing at a titanium Dude. vein. Yeah, <laughs> that that's a great move. I gotta add that to my repertoire. I I haven't thought about that one. That's a good one. Yeah, I mean, most of them were bots, so they couldn't really fight back anyway. But yeah, it was still fun. <laughs> uh, well, if they add the the bushes and crates that they did in Sod, oh fuck off! Oh, this is a, this is the cat podcast, mate. Next to the the go, mining node, yeah. <laughs> go, go go back to your bush plan game. We're talking about a man's game now. We're not talking about that shit that you play. <laughs> Sorry, I uh, the bushes, man. I can't stand them. <laughs> yeah, he got really emotional about that on the Sod podcast to the point like. Josh was on from Countdown to Classic, um, and he was like, what's your problem, Go?" <laughs> and Go's raging at it. He's like, this is fucking shit. Like, what are we playing? Poker? I can't even remember what you said. Oh, no, retail. Uh -oh. I think he was like, this is not classic. Uh, probably, yeah, because they, they, Blizzard said that Sod is supposed to be uh, like vanilla esque, and that is the anti vanilla being able to transform into. A fucking bush or a crate in a major city or in a pvp battleground no <laughs> but back to paladin yeah yeah, to paladin. yeah i mean back to subtle like i mean i i'm i yeah I, I feel like i know subtle's history obviously i know i i know he's an amazing tank and yeah like i think he's gonna be not think i know let me change my word in i know he's gonna be an amazing resource so for anyone who's watching this when you know uh, in the build up to Kata, like from now all the way like all the way through Kata into mop and god knows like however long we go for make sure his youtube channels in the description like make sure you go and give him a subscribe uh and yeah i i, I he won't let you down new podcast that he started recently as well it's got two episodes uh looks like a weekly show uh you want to speak on that for a second yeah sure uh basically just 
chill little uh weekly wow news show we just talk about what happened for that like reset week of wow uh it's called the week's end tavern just kind of a play on the world's end tavern in uh shatrath uh it was a old hangout spot of ours and yeah uh go over the news and some other segments like last time we talked about some changes we wanted to see in cata classic so yeah just pretty short like hour to an hour and a half podcast this like house it's really short yeah 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 <laughs> yeah we we own we are, our, our podcast is renowned for being an hour long um by the way so we're 30 minutes into the hour so maybe we should start talking about paladin uh no but we will uh awesome well yeah it's gonna be good now we've got subtle we're gonna talk about yeah everything paladin a nice overview for everyone who's maybe on the fence about playing paladin or not quite sure they change so we'll keep it quite broad to begin with and then maybe dig more into the details you know as we go through the show uh where would you like to start i mean i've, I've got i've got this on screen let me do it so i think probably talking over what you actually get you know if we're talking as early as level 10 so you know you've just ding level 10 you're a paladin i mean it's good well even if you ain't ding level 10, it's, this is going to be relevant from the first section of the pre-patch where you're going to get your new talents. Like, what is the benefit of actually picking your specialization? Because obviously there's no, you know, there's there's no ranks of things. Uh, everything scales as you level up when, we, when we're when we in Cataclysm. Uh, and yeah, certain, certain things are not available from talents that are ordinarily available from talents. It's just you get it by being that spec. Uh, go so whichever one of you want to take us away. I'm gonna get some ice. We can stop. Start with holy. Holy, okay, yeah, subtle. Go ahead, man. Um, sure, yeah. So, basically, right when you ding level ten, this is one of my favorite changes in Kata. Right when you ding level ten, you pick a spec, so you're gonna get some like core abilities, and just right away you feel like you're actually that spec. You don't have to. You know, like currently at Wrath, you kind of play Rhett into level 40 before you can start being a prop pally and things like that. So this just lets you just instantly feel like you're actually the spec you want to play. Uh, so for Holy, you get like Holy Shock as an on-use ability. You get uh, Walk in the Light, increase the effectiveness of your spells by 10%, and Word of Glory by 30%, and removes a cooldown on Word of Glory. So that's something I think would be cool if Prot got that, as mentioned before. And then you get some more mana regen. Uh, later on, you're going to get your Mastery too, which for Holy uh, increases or uh, puts an Absorb on your target uh, based on healing. Is that like a Valnir style proc? It, it yeah, like. it, it's like that, yeah. But it's just exactly. all the it's all the time. It's like, yeah, obviously Valinir yeah, is yeah. a prop. Mm -hmm. This is just every hill. Uh, so I suppose we should probably start yeah. with like, like we you know like Word of Glory. Obviously, we get super super early. Uh, like thirteen is it thirteen? I can't remember exactly what level it comes on at the moment. I'm on a level a uh, level eighty five. Yeah, so. I can't remember the level. But it, it's very early, uh, and, and Word of Glory is an ability that you can use based on Holy Power, which leads us nicely into the biggest change for Paladins, which which is weirdly... Uh, um, like Some people love it and some people hate it, and I don't really understand why. Uh, so, so, take it away, like Holy Power. Holy power, yeah. So, I mean, it's basically like combo points, but it stacks on you instead of the target. As a former rogue player, I mean, it just kind of feels second nature to me. Um, I, I've i never minded holy power. Like, I'm, I, I love pally without it. I love pally with it. It doesn't really matter to me, but some people just absolutely hate holy power. Like, that is their line in the sand. They they refuse to play Paladin when it has Holy Power. But to me, I mean, honestly, it doesn't really feel like it changes too much. Um, I kind of like it. But yeah, it'll, uh, for Prop Pally, uh, it's like Shield of Righteousness. Um, and then Red and Prod, you'll use Inquisition. Uh, Shield of Righteousness it's a spender it's essentially eviscerate it's like your damage 
holy power spender. And then Inquisition just increases your damage for a short time. It's a short buff, increases your holy damage. So it's kind of like Savage Roar for Feral Druid. And then Word of Glory, obviously instant cast heal based on your holy power, which is pretty incredible. Just instant cast heal. You can use it on yourself, use it on allies, whatever. Um, and then there's like several different ways to generate holy power, uh, like Crusader Strike, uh, it's a melee attack. So even holy powers will be using like Crusader Strike and melee to like generate holy power. And they also have some other ways to generate it. I'm honestly not super versed on holy, but yeah, several ways to generate holy power, three ways to spend it, but for holy, mainly just one. Yeah, so for holy, if you if you use your big heals on your so obviously like beacon is the, the, the biggest the biggest deal. Um so as a holy paladin, obviously beacon remains the same, except it lasts five minutes and actually only duplicates fifty percent of the heal for certain heals. Uh which I will tell you exactly how that works when I get it on screen. Um so yeah, beacon now all do in 60 yard radius it will do 50 percent of the majority of your hills like your big hills but 50 percent of um of holy light 100 percent of holy light so 50 percent for all hills but 100 percent for holy light but holy light in in kata goes from being your big hill in wrath to your little hill in kata so in kata holy light is what you're basically using as a as a filler, you know, you're not doing anything else. It's really, really low amounts of mana. Got chance of procking things like Daybreak, where then your Holy Shock won't trigger a cooldown. So now you can do two Holy Shocks. So Holy Shock is your primary way of getting Holy Power as a Paladin, um, as a as a Holy Paladin. So that means like you, you know you're spamming Holy Light, which is very mana efficient. Literally, you could spam it all day and you won't go home. But then you get a chance of getting. Yeah, back to back holy shocks to get two um get two holy power. And then like Subtle said, you'll also be in melee anyway, where you'll then be using Crusader Strike to get even more holy power. Then you'll be pumping out light of dawns and stuff like that, which is like nice big AoE heals. Um but it, the, the good thing about Beacon of Light now is it's not just that there is actually a reason to heal the person with beacon on. You know, in Wrath, there's zero reason. Like, if you're healing the person with Beacon on, you're you're playing your class wrong. Uh, whereas in in Kata, if you heal the person that's got the Beacon with something like Divine Light, you actually get Holy Power from it. So it, it's like a very high high skill, very like uh, spur of the moment. You've got to decide what well, what's more important. Do I do I do a Divine Light, a nice big Divine Light on someone else, and then fifty percent of that heal is going to go on the tank? Or do I put a nice big heal on the tank that's going to give me an extra ho uh, an extra holy power? It's like, yeah, very. I I love it. If you can't tell, like I love holy paladin and Kata. Do you have a ghost in your room, Scotty? But does the door keep opening? No, I've got the door. I've got I, I've, I've, I've got the other door open that the wind's blowing through. It's fucking boiling here at the moment. <laughs> I was like, is somebody peeking in the door? <laughs> no, no. I say behind that door is another door, and the other door's open, so the wind's blowing through. Um, but yeah, it, so so like like Subtle said, there's there's other ways outside of just like Crusader Strike, you know, which is your your obvious way to get it. Uh, as Rhett, like Divine Storm, which uh, yeah, I'll be interested in your thoughts on Divine Storm, Subtle, because I fucking I, that, that's the one Rhett change I don't like in Kata. Is requiring four targets, like four is such a weird number. It should be three. Yeah, it is kind of a weird number. Honestly, I haven't really played red at all, but I went over the talents on stream not too long ago, and I was getting kind of hype about red. Just like reading all the changes, like, um, I mean, like seals of command, like the new version of it, and uh, some of the other changes. Like, it looks like. Red's gonna be pumping, but uh, yeah, divine storm. It would be nice if it was if it was three. Um, little weird, little weird on the four because like there's so many situations that are like three target. So I'm not sure what they were thinking on that one. Yeah, it's it is. It feels really awkward, you know, when you've got like as a rep paladin. So I've played a lot of rep paladin and Kata, um, and you're right, it pumps like it, but it's it is. 
one of the hardest DPS, DPS specs to play, like no doubt. And I don't think anybody who knows anything about Kata would, would dispute that because there's so much going on when you've got like divine purpose procs going off. You know, you've got Art of War purpose procs going off. You've still, you're still really only obeying, uh, instead of it being a rotation, you're obeying a priority list. But the difference between walking in and hitting the boss and then getting a divine purpose proc on the pull versus not getting that is like, that's the difference between getting a 99 or 100 pass to getting a 90 pass. You know, it makes such a difference when you're physically got to get all three combo point uh, all three holy powers manually without a divine purpose proc to then be able to pop zealotry um to then be able to pop guardian angel like all of these things that we'll obviously get to um but it is so much fun and i i uh so my ma i've got mage main um but like obviously i'll be doing like the mage will be like 25 man the paladin's gonna be 10 man clearing everything on heroic you know i want to be doing both difficulties a week and i want two characters that i'm going to take very seriously to do both of those things uh but it's very difficult to justify leveling the mage first when the paladin is going to just, just going to be so much quicker like you just rip through everything no downtime no stopping it, it's mental but you know I, I do uh, I, I do think that, Pete, that you're going to see a big difference. I think that's what I like about Rep Paladin, is you're going to see the difference between... Like, in, in Wrath, I think it's very difficult to see the difference between a good Rep Paladin and a bad Rep Paladin. Because you've got Shadow Morn, you're, you're, even if you press one button wrong, like let's say you judge before you should have used a, 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 a Divine Storm proc, you know, it's like, did, did that crit? Didn't it crit? Like, you know, it's very just boring whereas you'll see a big difference between rat paladins in in kata and i actually think people might then end up going pro and holy and stuff because they find ret too difficult but the fact that I, I suppose where we actually started talking about this was divine storm like when you've got three targets it feels really weird pressing crusader strike because it's like, well, if I divine storm on three yeah. targets i'm not going to get a holy power which ultimately holy power is what you need I, I uh, we're not gonna. I don't think we're gonna get those sort of changes, but I'd love for that to go down to three. Yeah, I mean, I could see them making some changes. Like we started to see it in Olduvar. Um, they, I think that was when they added like the Hand of Reckoning glyph. That's another one. I'm like, I'm, I, I, presumably they're taking that out, but it is still in like uh, the files. So. Who knows? But I mean, with how good Red's already gonna be, I can't imagine they like keep that uh hand of reckoning glyph in. But we saw like that change, we saw the omen of clarity change. Um I think we had a few others. There was like the tuning on gargoyle early on. And then I think they fixed some things with like mages too. I can't quite remember, but there there was a little bit of like um fixing and class balancing stuff so I, I think we're gonna get some more of that in kata because they have like emphasized that this is kata with changes so i wouldn't be too surprised if we see some class balance things here yeah it, it looks like it's 4.1 where they they changed it to where it was four more targets to grant the holy power so yeah if they for this spell in particular they're just like ah oh, we'll leave this in the the 4.0.3 version of it instead of changing it then uh there, there was some stuff like that for druid too when we were talking about druid i was like man yeah, it'd be cool if certain spells were like launch date uh versions of it instead of the end of patch well the thing uh, yeah cause the thing is which i suppose we, we should have maybe even opened with when we're talking about divine storm is it does share a cooldown with crusader strike so it's not like it's not like wrath where you just press both rotationally uh, you, you know, you you you've got to choose. It's like, do I hit Crusader Strike uh, or do I hit Divine Storm? And if you're if there's three targets, hitting Divine Storm is weird because now that's one. Le yeah, uh, you, uh, it's probably still going to do more damage. You know, Divine Storm is going to do more damage, but that's one less holy power you're going to get. Whereas if you hit four targets, obviously then Divine Storm's better. But yeah, oh, again, we'll see. But yeah, we do need to mention the basics because I didn't even mention that. Divine Storm and Crusader Strike 
yeah, share a cool DM. Um, but the rest of the overviews, I mean, this is this is perfect, obviously, anyway, subtle for you. So protection, like let's say, you know, you, it's, it's pre-patch day, you've got your new talents, what are you going to get as protection? All right, yeah. Um, so pre-patch day, like early on in the tree, it's kind of just passive stuff. I mean, you're... Uh, oh, we, we should actually talk about first what you get for just specking prot. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, for for prot level 10, once you spec it, uh, you'll get a vendor shield right away, which feels awesome just having that at level 10. You're going to get vengeance, which is a new mechanic where when tanks take damage, a portion of that they get as attack power, a stacking attack power buff. And it stacks up to a maximum of your stamina plus 10% of your base HP, which is different than what the tooltip says. But uh, there's an old blue post where Blizzard says they left the tooltip wrong because it's just shorter to like say the wrong thing. And it was kind of <laughs> silly. But uh, that's what the blue post says. They're like, it's shorter this way, and most people won't notice. So we're just going to leave it like that. But yeah, stamina plus 10% of your base HP, which... Even early in Gata, like ends up being like what 10, 12k extra attack power. Like it's a lot. So that's pretty awesome. That's like one of my favorite things about tanking in Gata is you just get crazy amounts of attack power. And I think it's really fun when tanks do tons of damage. It, it's more interesting to me than just having like high threat abilities that do no damage. So uh, yeah, this, this, this is perfect for me to just do lots of damage. And then you're also going to get touched by the light, gives you 15% more stam, 8% spell hit, and has the old effect of you get spell power based on your strength. Then you're going to get judgments of the wise. This is a new thing for us. This is kind of like our mana regen now, because we no longer have like divine plea rolling at all times. We no longer like just constantly refresh it. So what this does is when you judge, you're going to get 30% of your base mana over 10 seconds. This also scales with haste. So you get the mana quicker based on your haste. And this is, this is just your primary like mana regen thing now instead of divide and plea. So that's pretty great. Like right at level 10, you already have like crazy regen. Then you're going to get your mastery later at level 80. And that is just block chance. Block chance has been removed from gear, uh, block rating. Um, now you just get it from your mastery. And it's going to be like your most important stat. Basically, you're trying to fill out your combat table, uh, completely push normal hits off the table. And to do that, you just need to accumulate uh, for a boss mob 102.4% dodge parry miss and block so mastery does not dr like dodge and parry so this is our like most efficient way to get it and you also just get way more percent per point so mastery you're just stacking that like crazy as much as you can so you can get to full combat table coverage but uh yeah so at level 10 you you're gonna have all that stuff already except for the mastery you get that later but if you're a level 80 pally already logging on pre-patch just go to your trainer you'll get that and then going into the going into the talent tree uh the first couple tiers it's mostly just passive stuff it's nothing too crazy because this is stuff that's like gonna be accessible to all of the specs so nothing, none of the talents get really good until you get to like third tier and beyond. That's when you start getting really good stuff because they're spec specific. Nobody else can get those. So once you get to the third tier, the, the first two tiers, they aren't like super exciting. It's just like a little more, bit more seal damage, a little more healing received, uh, attack speed, debuff, you apply the target judgments of the just, you guys are used to that one toughness increase your armor that kind of stuff but then you start getting into the really good stuff so like on tier three you got sanctuary which reduces your chance to be crit by six percent when you put full points in it this is a new thing in kata tanks no there's no longer defense on gear 
So tanks all just passively get crit immune through a talent. For pallies, this is it, Sanctuary. It's also just sort of a passive version of the old Blessing of Sanctuary. So Blessing of Sanctuary doesn't exist anymore. And this new Sanctuary is just a passive, gives you mana back when you block or dodge, and reduces your damage taken passively. So this, this talent's insane overall. Makes you crit immune, gives you tons of mana back, reduces damage taken. It's very, very good. Then, um, I mean, pretty much you're you're almost going for like just about everything um, in the pro tree, like day one. Uh, kind of the main main uh, points here. Wrath of the Lightbringer is one of your top damage abilities that just increases Crusader Strike and Judgment damage by a hundred percent. So. That I mean, a hundred percent more damage. That, these are already two of your high damage abilities. Like, it, it just puts it like through the roof. Um, and uh, Hammer of the Righteous, uh, like Divine Storm, we mentioned earlier, it shares a cooldown with Crusader Strike. So basically, this is your AOE, uh, like kind of core ability. And Crusader Strike is your single target. So it really just depends like what you're doing. If it's single target. Crusader Strike is what you're using for this cooldown. If it's AoE, it's Hammer of the Righteous. And generates a holy power. For Prot also, it's a three-second cooldown on both Hammer of the Righteous and Crusader Strike. So they're like your almost your top priority. Your top priority is like spending your holy power. But then after that is Crusader Strike or Hammer of the Righteous. And you're basically just going back and forth. Like you're pressing Hammer of the Righteous or Crusader Strike like every other GCD. So it the new rotation for prop eyes is called the 939 rotation. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Um the the current one is the 969 in Wrath. But they play really similarly. It seems a little daunting at first because, you know, it's new abilities, the rotation's different than what you're used to, but at the end of the day, it's just, uh, you're just going back and forth like you used to. Instead of doing Shield of Righteousness or Hammer of the Righteous, you're doing only Crusader Strike or only Hammer of the Righteous. And then on the other side, you're doing uh, consecration, Avenger Shield, Judgment, um, uh, Holy Wrath, um, Shield of Righteousness, possibly Inquisition. There's just like a whole bunch of things that are part of what we call the nines now. So, but at the end of the day, it just boils down to you're going back and forth between the two. So it, it keeps it still fairly simple, I think. And uh, let's see, further down, also one of the big things to know, Ardent Defender, no longer a passive. It's now an active ability, so you actually have to know when to use it. Uh, one of the biggest things in Wrath was like, this thing could just save your mistakes all the time because you always had this cheat death just to catch your mistakes for you. You're not going to have that anymore. You're going to have to be paying a lot of attention, making sure you know when is a good time to use it. It's also a three minute cooldown instead of a two minute. It's gonna reduce damage taken for 10 seconds after you use it, and it'll give you that cheat death effect like before. So still very, very good, but it's now active. You have to, you have to know when to use it. You can't just rely on it um, procking itself at the perfect time. Um, Holy Shield also completely changed. It's now a 30 second cooldown. It's uh, going to increase the amount you block for by 20% for 10 seconds. Instead of just being a regular part of your rotation, it's now like a short cooldown defensive that you're going to be using it a ton, just not part of, you know, your regular 939 rotation. And Divine Guardian, uh... Also, it's just called Divine Guardian now instead of Divine Sacrifice. Um, 
it's only available to prop alley. So this is like one of the big reasons to bring a prop alley into a raid is for this extra raid cooldown. You it reduces damage taken by 20% for everybody. There's no longer any damage transfer part of it. It's only the reduced damage and it doesn't apply to the pally themselves anymore. So you can't use it as like a personal cooldown anymore ever. So that is one of the, um, you know, you, you lose a cooldown there. It also is, uh, it, it's increased by uh, one minute. It's a three minute cooldown now. But you're... Can, um, I, can I stop you for a second? Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Is... Uh, does both Divine Guardian and Argent Defender, are, do they both encourage GCD or can you macro those together? So you Divine Guardian your raid and then you Ardent Defender yourself? Is is that something that Pallies do? or? Um, No, because uh, there's no longer any damage transfer on it. It's just a 20% reduced damage taken. Yeah, I, so... th I think what Go means is so so technically you're going to get the 20, you're going to get the 20% damage reduction oh, okay. from Ardent yeah, Defender yeah. while the raid gets it from Guardian. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it... Um, Probably not needed. I guess tanks do have like similar HP now to the rest of the raid, though. I, that's not really a way I would normally think to use it, but like there might be situations where that makes sense, yeah, to make sure like you as a tank are also covered with a small damage reduction. Yeah. Is is it going to be called D guard or something, or are people still going to try to call it uh, that? Probably, probably DG. DG, DG, DG. I don't know. It'd be okay. DG. Okay. DG and AD. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing, the thing <laughs> I just that need to know what to listen for. The thing know? that uh, what I'd like your opinion on, subtle, is um, like holy shield. So, like, there's mm -hmm. only uh, as the two block tanks. Like, there's only two ways that you can physically block more than thirty percent. So like every every block is always thirty percent, um, and you're just increasing your chance to block that thirty percent damage. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, the warrior can block sixty percent with critical block, whereas the paladin can block fifty percent when holy shields up. Which one would you prefer as a as a shield tank? Would you prefer the RNG ness of constantly being able to critical block, or the more control over being able to only block fifty percent? It kind of depends on the gearing because, like, with crit block, it actually gets better the more you have, kind of mm -hmm. like armor pen. Um, so, like, early on, crit block feels really bad, like in the 4.3 version. But so I would, I would prefer like the holy shield, but even in phase one, holy shield still RNG because you don't have full combat table coverage yet. So, like, your blocks will be for, you know, 50% or 51% if you have the block meta gem. Um, but you're also going to have like a 15, 20% chance to take a normal hit. So there's also just a chance like your Holy Shield's doing nothing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it kind of depends. Like, uh, I guess for the majority of the expansion, I'd probably rather have the Holy Shield. Hmm. But for like the very end i'd probably rather have the crit block like once you have like way more mastery where like warriors can stack that crit block way higher yeah again it's one of those um one of those little you know like niggly things when you look at uh, at like how different things work so like going back to divine storm you know the fact that it's four targets instead of three i, I always found it really strange that holy shield was 20 percent and it weren't 30 percent. i know it's minor it don't make that much of a difference but it's like if you're trying to keep tank sort of working in similar ways i was always a bit like what why 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 does a worry why can a warrior block 30 percent but a paladin can block 50 percent and i know yeah then you've got rng of, of, of crit block you've it would be like you said you've got rng when it comes to holy shield as well i always just found it weird that it was 20 percent yeah I, I mean we also do uh we do get more like block chance from mastery than warrior because there's they get like a little bit less, but they also get crit block like on top of it. But no, yeah, so yeah, you it, block it more, but for less. Weird. Yeah, that makes sense though. No, but that that does actually make sense. Yeah, when you say it, it's like yeah, you, you get more, you get more block, but block less. They get less block, but block more. So you would you would think it would balance out whether yeah. or not it does. We'll we'll see. 
I mean, it sounds like it maybe doesn't balance out because uh, people are pretty low on Brawl Warrior. I haven't played it enough to like really know, but yeah, it seems like people are pretty low on Brawl Warrior right now. So we'll see what happens. I, I think Prop Warrior in, in Kata, like from what I've seen, and I know Majay, who no, he won't be watching because he's just unlike he's been been gaming straight for like thirty odd hours, so he'll be a bed. Um, but he he's he tanks everything tier eleven, tier twelve um maybe maybe even tier 13 i don't know but with me personally tier 11 tier 12 and he'd done it on every every tank like druid ek paladin warrior and he loved his warrior like it, it weren't necessarily the best tank but he loved playing the warrior you know so i, I think you do uh like I, I always try and be a little bit you know like what do you enjoy playing like it's not like oh we're not gonna clear the content because we've got a prop warrior like you'll still clear the content but maybe your healers just need to be a little bit more on their game than they would be if you had a dk and let's say a feral tank um but i do try to like do my best to not deter people from playing you know a specific tank if that's if that's what they want to do um but where would you rank the the paladin so let's try and deter them where would you rank the paladin in in the tank you know when you've got the four tanks what would you say is one two three and four so just uh disclaimer is that i have fairly limited cat experience so like mainly just phase one normal raids some heroic raids did lots of like dungeons and heroics on all the tanks um so with that caveat um to me, it felt like Bloody K number one for main tank, Prop High number two for main tank. And then, I mean, Feral and Warrior pretty close, probably Warrior ahead of Feral. Um, but then for off tank, uh, Feral probably number one. It brings just a lot more damage as an off tank than anything else. And then probably prop pally number two for off tank you get the divine guardian it's nice to have that like extra raid cd option especially in 10 man where you may have like fewer options and then i guess warrior after that and then i, I haven't really like thought about bloody k as an off tank so i'm not exactly sure if i'd like put it ahead of like warrior there or like after but yeah um in general i mean you probably know like most people play, did the like blood decay plus feral like uh off tank um i think pretty much everything will be fine in that off tank role i don't think it's like a huge huge deal unless you're playing at like the highest level and but even for main tank i think that like pretty much everything should be fine like if you aren't going for like week one clears you're gonna like take a few weeks to like kill all the heroic bosses. You're gonna have time to get more gear. I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal, but again, I don't have enough experience to like say for sure yet. But that's kind of where I'm feeling. So, Scotty, can you just clip that part really quick, cut it in half so the ending disclaimer gets cut out of it, and then upload it as Subtle's tank tier list for Catalyst? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but ease would have been the same as mine. I it's not. Like... Like it, <laughs> we got them. It, 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 mine would have been exactly the same. It's like I, I would, as a main tank, I'd want a blood DK. If I can't have a blood DK, I'd want a prop pally. Like that, 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 that's main tank sorted. As an off tank, if I can't have a feral druid, I don't even know what I'd want. You know, like yeah, prop paladin for divine guardian, but I wouldn't even want a prop paladin being an off tank because let's face it, the majority of the time they stood there doing nothing. Like if we're talking like off tanking on Ragnaros, for example. Uh, you know, the vast majority of the time, uh, and I've done it, I've been the off tank as a feral druid on Ragnaros. I taunt and I tank the boss with cooldowns on for about 12, 14 seconds, and then I'll be cat. You know, and more or less cat the, the entire time. It must be quite a depressing state of affairs to, to, to be like a, a DK off tank or a prop warrior off tank where, like, you're not getting vengeance. You're not getting hit, so you're not getting vengeance. You can't do any damage. You just sort of stood there like... Uh, do you want me to taunt yet? Yeah, like anything for me to do? Like the feral feral druid is like going to be a such such a super. Well, not feral druid, just druid is going to be such a super flexible role 
in uh, in in Cat, depending on how you play it. And like Go, you would be a perfect example. You know where you you could be Boomy in one spec, you could actually be Feral Cat and Bear in the other spec. So you could be ranged DPS, melee DPS, and tank with two specs. You could be you 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 know you could be Boomy Resto. Obviously, that goes without saying. Or if you want to do it properly, like what what most druids will probably find themselves that uh, that enjoy Feral is there'll be tank, DPS, and resto. Literally, I can do whatever. Oh, I can DPS this fight. I can heal this fight. I can tank this fight. I can off-tank this fight. Yeah, yeah, literally, they they are just... This is not a druid podcast, but, like, you know, they are the, they're the perfect, perfect off-tank. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing to note, too, for Warrior, uh, Vigilance got changed as well. So the person you put Vigilance on, you're going to get Vengeance equal to like 20% of the damage that target takes. So as a Warrior off tank, you will get some Vengeance, which I'm not sure how good it's going to end up being, but it is something at least to give the Warrior a little more damage while they're not currently tanking. That, that's that, yeah, that is a really good point. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. So, so maybe, if not Druid, then Warrior off tank potentially be. actually you be do rallying rallying cried too so you do bring like a red defensive as well yeah can i ask you about spell hit because at level 10 you mentioned we get touched by the light and it's going to get you eight percent spell hit so is there a cap after that that you need to gear for or reforge to and what spells are would you want that spell hit for is it just for your taunt so I'm not 100% on all the nitty gritty stuff yet, but taunts and interrupts can no longer miss. So you do not need spell hit for those anymore. So that really, really devalues spell hit just on its own that like it doesn't affect your taunt anymore because that was kind of the primary thing spell hit was relevant for before. But no longer need spell hit for taunt. Um there is like some really tiny benefit to it uh, based on Vex, uh, main tank it in Sims. He was like the OG, like major, like Sim guy back in the day. Um, there, There is some tiny benefit. I'm not sure exactly what it affects, but um, you, you will hit spell hit cap just by getting melee hit cap, which is something that it's not required because your primary job as a tank is staying alive. But once you're able to survive, you can add in like hit and expertise and just getting to that melee hit cap would also get you to the spell hit cap just because of the uh, 8% spell hit on that talent. Too easy. Yeah. Was there any other talents left? You covered pretty much all uh, of them. We, uh, yeah. Rhett, Rhett, we ain't actually spoke about Rhett at all. No, well, we've we've touched on well, yeah, Brett yeah, as for, in for, talent, for but uh, for prot, I mean, I like Grand Crusader. Me personally, as prot, you know, so when when you Crusader Strike or Hammer of the Righteous, when they deal damage to your primary target, you've got a twenty percent chance of refreshing the cooldown of your next Avenger Shield, which is yep. that, nice. That feels pretty good. That feels really good while you're leveling, especially. But even in raids and max level, still really really good. Uh. Also, we should mention with Hallowed Grounds, people are probably going to notice that one, uh, reduce, uh, increases Consecration damage and decreases mana cost. So Consecration now costs like half your mana to cast. It, it costs a ridiculous amount of mana. And it also has like a 30-second cooldown now instead of the much shorter cooldown it has at the moment, eight seconds in Wrath. Um, so this talent makes it like a lot more usable. Because you will have mana issues if you're like using Consecration on cooldown without this talent. You will just run out of mana. But Consecration is a lot less damage now like compared to other things in a rotation. So it is less important now. But if you're going to be using it on cooldown, you really need like at least one point in this. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Rep Paladins trying to Consecrate on cooldown. <laughs> like, what? What, why Why am I home? Yeah. I'm just doing my normal rotation. Yeah. It, it's going to be like this priest trying to still spam bubbles. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a lot of adjustments. A lot of adjustments happening for people. Uh, absolutely. Well, at least that's going to, that'll encourage the tanks to keep their 
AOE pack inside of that consecration instead of, oh, well, yeah, consecration is about to come off cooldown after three seconds. So let me reposition. And then it re, uh, moves it out of my hurricane and I got to re hurricane. So I, I like the 30 second cooldown. Yeah. Keep everything still. Don't be encouraged to be able to move it around. <laughs> Screw the uh, mobility. <laughs> But we're gonna have consecration down even less, so maybe maybe we're just moving it out of your hurricane even more because we aren't even concerned about consecration almost. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I would. I'd move it. I'd move it. Out. Nice it back. Oh. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the typhoon play. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and I'll slow with my mushrooms. Yeah. This, oh yeah. yeah tanks love place. nothing more than when uh, DPS just randomly knock everything out of like the nice grouped up pack. Yeah, I do it on it's, accident. It's our sometimes. favorite. It's our favorite. I feel terrible every time I do it. Sometimes I do it just for for fun. If it's like rigs tanking or something, I'll be like, ah, "Good luck, motherfucker." <laughs> Don't worry, I was oh, raiding with got... him a minute ago, and uh, every time we pulled a boss, I was saying "Good luck, motherfucker" because I was having to <laughs> I was having to hand my hand to sell myself on every pull on the pull as Rhett. Like, uh, yeah, fuck you, rigs. Love you, rigs. Uh, right, Rhett. <laughs> Uh, do, should, do, 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 you, do you want me to do rat? I can do rat. Obviously, I've played a lot of rat. I can just smash through it quickly. I I, I know almost nothing about rat, so all of you. All right, cool. Uh, so when you first go rat, you're gonna get Templar's verdict, and obviously at, at level ten, you're also gonna be generating holy power. So this is your spender. You know, you're you're gonna get word of glory very early as well, which then you just have to make a decision. It's like, am I at 50% health. Do I need to spend my holy power on a heal on myself, which is free, but it just costs holy power? Or do I want to smack the boss or the or the mob when I'm grinding and questing like really fucking hard? Then you're gonna use Templar's verdict. So it ba it's ba it's fucking never worth using it before bit before free holy power, I gotta be honest. Cause it's literally one holy power is forty five percent damage, as in weapon damage, two is hundred and thirty five, and three is three hundred and fifty one. Like you just gotta look at those numbers. Like that, there, there, there's some seriously big jumps, you know. Where you using it at two, you might as well just wait for another auto attack and save the holy power. But when you use it with three, it will make you hard. Like it is really fucking good. Like it, it, it really is, and it, it pairs really nicely with a talent, which we'll we'll get on in a minute when we actually look at the talents a little bit. Um, but you're also going to get, when you ding 10 and you pick Retribution, you're straight away going to be doing 25% more damage with two-handed weapons, which is cool. Chief of Light, very much like Protection. Obviously, when you go prot and you get touched by the Light, uh, where you're going to get 60% of your strength is is, is converted to spell power, uh, you're going to get Chief of Light, which Chief of Light's in Sod, I believe now, anyway, um, where your spell power is, you, you get 30% of your attack power as spell power and your chance to hit with spells by 8% as well. Uh, again, useful for Holy Wrath, but outside of that, really, I, I, the 8% hit, I don't know if that was sort of just, that was there at the start. I don't like, so if you've got anything to add with this, obviously feel free to chime in, but... It feels like a very weird thing to still exist in 4.3.4. Like I have a feeling there was probably more worth of the 8% hit for Prot and Rhett maybe throughout the patches, and, and then at some point they went, right, your hit can't miss, your taunts can't miss, but I was like, oh, we won't remove that. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's probably what it was. I'm not totally sure on the timeline of changes, but I would guess the uh, taunt and interrupts not missing came later. And this is what they originally had to effectively do that because, like, Rhett was going to gear for, you know, melee hit gap anyway. And with this, they would kind of just hit spell hit gap. But I think they just kind of made it more simplified and just forgot the, or maybe not forgot, but just left that in as kind of a relic. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's how I feel about it. That's why, that's why I asked you just in case there was any. Like specific abilities that I was missing, and Holy Wrath is literally the only one that I can think of. Judgments class as a melee, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, the only thing I can think of is Holy Wrath that's going to actually benefit from it. Um, but much like Prot, Rhett also get their way of getting mana back, and it's fucking epic. 
Uh, so whenever you judge, you get 25% of your base mana over 10 seconds. I mean, it's very, very, very difficult to go Oom as a rep paladin unless you're trying to consecrate. Um, like, you know, you run in and you pull, you consecrate, and then you're like, shit, did I get mana burned? Where's like, where's where's my mana gone? Um, so you do need to be very mindful as a rep paladin. That's not to say you shouldn't use consecrate, because y- you will, um, but really you want to look at holy wrath as your new consecration so as a as a as a rep paladin when you're dps in like you're using holy wrath on cooldown because now obviously yeah it, it just does damage just split between all the targets but it will stun if a demon's an undead but that's like your new consecration and, and if you've got enough mana to be able to drop a con then you just do it um and when you then eventually get mastery uh, your Templar's Verdict, Crusader Strike, and Divine Storm deal X amount of additional damage as holy damage. So, basically just increases your core abilities, or your, yeah, your core abilities sort of damage by giving them additional holy damage. And to be fair, Rep plays completely differently. So I'm not I'm not going to bother going through all the talents. I'm just going to give you some real, like, big highlights. Like, the talents where... I look at them and I'm like, man, this is fucking insane. So Art of War will be a prime example. So for anyone who plays a Rhett in Wrath, you know um, using your Art of War procs on Exorcism is quite low priority. You know, like literally, well, it's the lowest priority. You're, you're, if everything else is on cooldown, you'll use your Art of War proc on, on Exorcism because it does fuck all damage. Uh, whereas actually it's your highest damage and ability in, in Kata. So, like, you want to be... Con- it's it's not necessarily your highest damage ability. I should reword it. If, for the, the amount of times it procs versus the amount of damage it does compared to everything else, you want to consume them, like, non-stop, no matter what. No matter what else you can press, you consume that Art of War proc. Um, so that, again, unless... I, I will actually just put a caveat in there myself, myself, unless more modern sims, you know, closer to Kata, prove otherwise... But as we stand at the moment, like consuming your Art of War procs is like number one. Because uh, your auto attacks have a 20% chance. So that's a high chance, obviously, uh, to make it instant free and cause 100% extra damage. So, like, it's big. Uh, the other big talents in Rhett I like is Long Arm of the Law. So when you Judgment, you then get a 45% speed boost for four seconds. Like, as, as, uh, quite well-renowned without engineering as being a quite immobile class to now have like a mini sprint on, what, a eight-second cooldown. Eight seconds. Every eight seconds, you can fucking get a speed boost. Like that's, That sounds busted in PvP. I am it, just it, thinking of Rhett's chasing me down. I'm <laughs> going to fucking destroy your ass in PvP. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not kiting a Rhett Paladin. Like, it's fucking disgusting. Um. Yeah, like so. Uh, like again, I won't go through everything. Seal, seals of command changes. You know, so it's not seal of command anymore. Uh, your seal of righteousness, seal of truth, and seal of justice now also deal seven percent weapon damage when triggered. In addition, your seal of righteousness now hits all enemy targets within melee range. So you you've now sort of gone from where you've got seal of seal of vengeance, seal of truth, whatever you want to call it, as your single target, and then you have got seal of command as your AOE. Uh, but you also do have Seal of Righteousness still in Wrath, but obviously you, you would never use it. Now you're basically like Seal of Truth is your, your single target and Seal of Righteousness is your it's your AoE. It's basically your Seal of Command now. That, that, that's all that's really changed. Apart from now by taking this talent, it also increases the, the damage when you're doing single target as well. Um, and then Divine Purpose, which is just the best fucking talent in the world. So when you you got a fifteen percent chance, and honestly, I cannot I cannot o- overstate how important this talent is and how good it feels when it procs. So you got a fifteen percent chance when you use Judgment, Exorcism, Templar's Verdict, Divine Storm, Inquisition, Holy Wrath, or Hammer of Wrath. So basically, all of your abilities that are retribution based, you got a fifteen percent chance to then. Uh, instantly cause your next holy power spender to act as if it had three holy power. So what you can do with this, bearing in mind it says Templar's Verdict on it, if you get lucky, you can Templar's Verdict, Templar's Verdict, Templar's Verdict, 
Templars verdict. Like literally just back to back to back to back and you'll be fucking doing um what did we say? Three hundred and three hundred and fifty one percent weapon damage with free holy power, like back to back constantly. It's fucking mental. But it does also make the rep paladin very RNG. Like some pulls will be amazing and you'll be like, this is the best thing ever. And then some are really frustrating. Because if you think about starting a fight with zero holy power, you need to get Inquisition up, which is what you're going to get at level 81, which is what increases your holy damage by by 30%. And obviously, it's like like Sotl said right at the start of the podcast, very much like Savage Raw, you know, it, it's what you want to keep up. Or very much like Slice and Dice for a rogue, you know, it's something that you just maintain. It It costs holy power to obviously put it on. But the difference between being able to just walk straight in get a divine purpose proc and then use the next talent we're going to talk about which is zealotry which is um another cooldown and i sort of sigh when i say it because rep paladins have got so many fucking dps cooldowns it's ridiculous and and you don't macro them together like, i want to make that really clear as well it's not like you just put all your dps cooldowns together and uh, and then press one button and it does them all because you don't you have to literally use them all separately um, which we might get onto in a little while. Uh, but your Crusader Strike generates three charges of holy power when you hit. So instead of getting one, you get three. So if you can walk straight in, get a Divine Purpose proc, and then bang Zealotry on, you can now get a three-point Inquisition on straight away, and then Crusader Strike, Templar's Verdict. Crusader Strike, then you need a filler. So at that point, it might be Crusader Strike, and then Exorcism, Templar's Verdict. Then Crusader Strike, filler. Yeah, you, you know... But it gets it flowing nicely. If you walk in and you have to wait like fucking uh, for I've not like what thirteen seconds before you even get your like a three point um, inquisition up, it like then starts feeling a bit shit. So it's very RNG. But have I spoke too much? I feel like I'm talking a lot. No, but no. It... It's it's giving me time to think about like this holy power thing. Can you not just have the thing that we do? throughout classic where you just have a mob right before the boss pool like that warriors oh, are building yeah. the rage on yeah absolutely you just start the fight with your holy power because it looks like it takes 10 seconds for a holy power like to start going away because I, I know like balance druid i can just get into eclipse before the, the boss fight and start off in a lunar or solar are uh, most so, guilds gonna do yeah, that? that that'll probably be a thing yeah, if you're passing, yeah, right. but like, you, you, like, go. We're going to be raiding together. Are you going to go, yeah, Scott, that's great. Let's wait for you to get holy power. And I'll tell you what, let's base this entire pool around you. Like, are you going to do that for me? I wouldn't mind. I'm taking a chill, dude. Oh, I'm shit. No, you won't. Cat is, cat is chill. If if uh, pallies want to get their holy power stacked up pre-pool, I'm all for it. We, I, I've sat there for 45 seconds while people were like, oh, I got a trinket swap pre-pool. Uh, I need a, a minute cool or a minute pool timer. Uh, that's fine. As long as I know ahead of time, I'm cool with it. But if it's like... Clip it. All clip of it. Sudden... Someone. Clip it. I, I, don't <laughs> want it. I don't want him fucking moaning at me when Kata comes out and he's like, oh, for fuck's sake, are we waiting for him again? Clip it. He said he's taking it chill. He don't mind. He's taking it chill at the moment because he's busy doing incursions on Season of Discovery. Wait till we're actually <laughs> wait till we're actually raiding in Kata, and then we'll see how chill he's taking it. I'll take it chill, dude. I'll sit there and I'll just be dropping my mushrooms and sitting there waiting to pull the boss, and it's fine. I'll just sit down in my little big fluffy moon conform and just wait and tap my talons on the ground. I suppose I should have mentioned Sacred Shield as well, actually, because that is quite a big one. The fact that it's now... You wouldn't really associate Sacred Shield with being a rep talent, would you? Um, but when reduced below 30% health, you gain a Sacred Shield, which, yeah, basically just absorbs a shitload of damage and increases, he and increases healing you take with a 60-second cooldown. So, like, Holy Paladins, Proc Paladins, like, no one's got... Well, even rep Paladins, technically. Like, you haven't got a, a Sacred Shield that you can cast anymore. It's just a rat talent. And I think I'm done with rat. Subtle. Any thoughts? Uh, that sounded like a good rundown. Honestly, I don't know too much about red, but uh, learned a little bit there. Um, on my stream the other day, just for fun, we were like kind of theory crafting, like what uh, 
talent specs could look like if it didn't require you to go down to like your 31 point to like go onto the next tree. Cause that is another change. I don't think we mentioned in, uh, Cata where once you like pick a spec, you have to put 31 points in that tree before you can put points in any other tree. So we were kind of just messing around with it, uh, the other day, like, what could you do? Like if, if they like remove that restriction and sacred shield on a prop guy sounded pretty amazing. Cause like with vengeance, obviously you have a ton of attack power and then that's going to be multiplied by 2.8 and it's uh what a one minute cooldown. Um, and just, you know, it, every time you get low HP, it like catches you. So that, that, that plus like, uh, seals of command it seems like there were some pretty cool possibilities i doubt they would ever remove that restriction but it was just kind of a fun little experiment well, it's funny that, you say it yeah the, i was gonna say like, what, we what spoke about, about it didn't we go yeah yeah, yeah. and what, what about the glyph though like somebody asked earlier like at the start of the show but we weren't on that topic yet like for the Rhett glyph that they so, so we spoke about it. Yeah, so it already, it, it oh, already it spoke about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was probably I was looking something up. I guess. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned it in the fact that it works on the beta, but I I would mm. I I, I tell you what. Fuck my mage. Yeah. I'll have two rat paladins if they leave that glyph in. I'm just putting it out there now. <laughs> yeah. Does is it actually like in the beta? Like I saw it's on Wowhead. I'm not sure if it's actually in the beta. Yeah, yeah, it's in, it's in, it's in the beta. Um, oh, okay. At the you, same you way, can, I, actually, can you can you use it and it actually still does damage and everything? Uh, 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 I don't know. So Omen of Clarity does. So for for druids, it works. But you have to copy the glyph itself over and then put the glyph in, and then it works. So you gotcha. can't copy your character over with it. I personally. Uh, I've leveled a paladin to 60 and another paladin to like 52 and then my main paladin from 80 to well yeah I'm, I think I'm in Oldham now mm, no I'm not I'm in deep home that's a lie um but I haven't bothered copying it copying it over because I don't even want I don't even want to get used to it being a thing because I just can't see it happening yeah, you'd never want to play regular Kata Rep Pally again after that. It would just be so disgusting. Like Rep Rep Paladin will be the best DPS from from the first phase all the way until the end. If that glyph makes it in. Like I, I will I will hang my hat on that comment now and say that if that glyph exists, Rep Paladin will be the best DPS throughout the entire expansion. Because they, they're already fucking pump. Like you add fifteen percent on top of what they're already doing, and that's just like they can't. Like they, they, Blizzard are not. They are, but they're not that incompetent. I don't think. Yeah, I think, I think it's just a relic of stuff that was left over when they like merged the clients or whatever they do to you know get us to the next uh, classic expansion. Yeah, and like like um, like Pung Pungas has said in chat. You know, taunt doesn't do damage anymore, anyway. So, like, if if they add yeah. it, so it did. It would have to the glyph would have to like add the damage back to it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, no, I think uh, this is just like we'll, we'll see all of this shit transform like quite quickly. You know, at the moment we're we're seeing yeah, like you said, relics. You know, we're seeing things of wrath that like won't exist. Uh, none of the shit's working. We can't even use random dungeon finder on the beta. You know, there's like there's so much shit that just doesn't actually work that they're just things that people I think are overthinking. Uh cool. Anyway, I, I feel like that was a, a good overview of the three specs, what you're gonna get, some key talents. Uh I mean we can we can is there any go? Is there was there anything on my list of things that we need to cover before maybe we get into a bit more of the nitty gritty of the specs or mm, I don't I, I looked at it. I don't think so. I think we're we've got like glyphs to talk about. Another thing I was curious was like uh which faction for like racials uh would be best for like prop pally uh holy. Does it make any difference to have a certain race to get extra stamina for vengeance or something by being an orc or something like that? Like, does it change at all with wrath? Like, should people 
re-roll if they're trying to min-max uh, from one race to another? Yeah, it changes a little bit. So in Kata, we get the option on Horde to be Tor and Pallies before we only had the option to be Blood Elf. So, I mean, min-max, you pick the only, you know, race available. But with Torin and Kata, they get 5% more base HP, um, which means you get about, it's a little bit over 2,000 additional HP, which it isn't too crazy because our health pools are going to get up to the, you know, 180 to like 240k range as the expansion progresses. But it's something. And you will also get a little over 200 attack power um on your like vengeance cap too from that so that is pretty good because you should generally be around vengeance cap in a raid and especially with the version we have where it ramps up much quicker and it's harder for it to decay than earlier versions of vengeance and kata um so blood elf really is just bringing arcane torrent which situationally can be good but overall Personally, I'm going Torn Pally because having more HP, um, more attack power all the time, and then War Stomp is pretty similar to Arcane Torrent. Arcane Torrent, you know, like obviously doesn't have a cast time. So that is unfortunate for War Stomp. Like you can be hit during it, like you can't avoid. Um, but uninterruptible casts that on mobs that like can be stunned like war stomp can cover those where arcane torrent wouldn't be able to but then arcane torrent can obviously interrupt mobs that are not stunnable where war stomp wouldn't be able to so there's kind of a give and take on the two of those but overall to me torrent just kind of wins out you get the hp the ap and war stomp is pretty serviceable in uh replacing arcane torrent anyway this is why I'm so. I, this is why I'm so glad you're here because I've got to be honest. The the whole getting actual like getting extra attack power from being tour and went straight over my head until you just said it. I I, I that wouldn't even be yeah. something that I even put it like if someone said what's the best I, I'd say Torum anyway just for more health you know so my default answer would be Torum but I didn't actually then think shit yeah you, you, you're gonna get it, it don't matter how much if you got ten more attack power. That's still 10 more attack power. You know, that's still like, that's, that's still better than not getting any extra mm -hmm. attack power from being a, a, a Blood Elf. That's pretty good. Yeah, like, um, yeah, because as we mentioned before, like, uh, part of the Vengeance Cap calculation is base HP, 10% base HP. So since Torrent gets more base HP, they have a higher Vengeance Cap. Um, and then for Alliance, I haven't looked a lot at Alliance just because I don't. I don't play Alliance, but uh, it seems to me Dwarf would be the best option because Stoneform gets changed from a 10% armor increase to a 10% all damage reduction. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a pretty good change. That's a, I mean, 10% isn't a lot, but like it's definitely better than 10% armor. And then they also get uh, expertise with maces. Um, I would have to see how often a mace is like your phase bis, but yeah, uh, just initial reaction would be like dwarf looks like a really good option for like prop alley. Hmm. Uh, and for holy, uh, I mean, human is, in my opinion, is uh, is a clear cut winner for alliance. Just yeah, if you're a holy paladin, three percent extra spirit, it's just more regen. I, I, I just don't see anything being better uh, for Horde. Yeah, that, that'd be something to mention too. Uh, Spirit is like the regent, mana regen stat for like all, for everybody now, all healers and everything. There's no longer like MP5 as a stat. So yeah, the uh, it, that that would be my thought too, would be human for Holy. Yeah, for, for Horde though, I mean, i, I got to be honest with you, I, I'd kind of still, and this is going to be a weird take, I, I'd still kind of lean towards Tauren just for when you're not healing. Because, right, you're not always going to be holy, are you? You might be holy and then tank now and again. You you might be wrecked now and again. I don't know. I, I think actually for holy as, as 
as horde does it re does it really matter kind of depends on the player i think like if you are going to be like playing a lot of roles like maybe um torn would make sense but i think if you are like a player that's like basically only going to play holy you really want to be blood elf just for the mana regen on arcane torrent yeah yeah which so, i mean like, holy in, paladins in fights, are very like, mana yeah. efficient like yeah, yeah. That, that's the only thing like i, I honestly yeah I, I i i i struggle spending my mana on a uh yeah on a on a paladin <laughs> a holy paladin with you know with a little bit of gear but yeah it, it, again yeah i suppose if if you was only holy it yeah just kind of yeah go blood elf i'd agree with that all right uh to the glyphs yeah i just meant to yeah. i just i just tell you now something that i just done which uh, it, it's not really going to matter to any of you but it kind of matters to me a little bit I uh, just went to delete a level one hunter on my private server account and deleted my 85, 85 death knight. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. I just ended the ticket. That's quite that, annoying. Is that your own, uh, your personal one or like white main or something? It's white main. Yeah. Yeah. I, I literally had the account okay, yeah. full I'm of everything. Sending the ticket. Oh, I won't even bother. I don't even. I don't even want to talk about Death Knight anyway, ever. Other than, other than blood, we'll talk about blood DK, but then we won't talk about anything else. Although unholy is going to be right. fucking insane in the first phase. Um, cool. Where next go? Glyphs. We got prime, major, minor, uh, for holy, prot, and ret. Well, yeah, actually, before we get to the glyphs, because the glyphs are quite boring, actually. To be fair, um, because I, I I do actually genuinely believe that prime glyphs are possibly the most boring things that blizzard have ever added like may how does it happen that major glyphs are more interesting than prime glyphs when prime are the prime are meant to be the big ones prime the, the, i mean the clues in the name i mean i do know why because obviously it was meant to be the the path of the ancients that we got in Catter, and then they run out of time and then they just put this shit in instead um but what about just like general play style you know of the free specs you know like what what uh what are you to spec uh expect and we can start with prot i know obviously you've already touched on like the nine three nine you know being the new the, the new nine six nine um but you know how busy do you feel as a prop paladin like do you feel like you're constantly like you're getting fucking wrist ache because you're pressing that many buttons do you feel like you've got a lot of control over what's going on yeah you know, well what's your thoughts about general play style of prot yeah, so it's similar to Wrath where you're literally doing something every single GCD for the most part. It's very rare you'd ever be in a situation where you weren't. Um, and yeah, you, you feel like you have tons of control over everything. You have a lot of cooldown. So you're playing like a much more active role in like your uh, damage mitigation than in Wrath. You've got like Holy Shield, we mentioned before, the 30 second cooldown. So that's a short cooldown defensive that you're going to be using constantly uh divine protection is now 20 percent reduced damage and one minute cooldown so that's another really short cooldown that you're using constantly uh in place of like the 50 percent reduction we now get guardian of ancient kings three minute cooldown um that replaces like the old divine protection since it moved down in both damage reduction and cooldown then ardent defender also a cooldown now uh, so yeah, you just have like a lot of defensive cooldowns you're gonna need to be managing, and you're also just part of your rotation is you're always pressing something every GCD. So uh, to me, it feels really good. I like I like classes that are like a little bit higher APM, doing at least one thing every GCD. So if that's the kind of style you like, probably I would definitely be for you. And then also just the active mitigation, it, may, it makes tanking feel better when, like, you know, you aren't relying on passive things to, like, keep you alive. So to me, it's a really fun version of prop eye and tanking in general, I guess. Cool. Uh, we, we, that's something we haven't touched on, actually, is the new abilities and, like, real key changes across Paladin completely. Like you guys can tell that are, that are watching live or even watching the VOD, we didn't really put a lot of planning into, 
into it. Maybe maybe it's evident we're winging it as we go along. But with Paladin, I feel like even if we if we set a a, a, a rigid agenda, we're going to talk about Holy for forty five minutes, and then we're going to talk about Prot. Like it, it, we wouldn't get past the first spec. So it is about like I I really do want it to be an overview before we get into the nitty gritty. Um, but we actually have it. Like you said, Guardian. Yeah, Guardian Age of Kings. No one probably even has a clue what that is. Um, so maybe before we go any further, we talk about the new abilities that Paladins get, because it, it's fairly limited anyway. Um, but Guardian Ancient Kings, first of all, what, what does that do? So, um, Yeah, so it's a new cooldown Paladins get. It has a different effect for each spec. Uh, the Prot one is just 50% reduced damage um, through my cooldown. I think it lasts 12 seconds. I'm not 100% on the duration. Um, I don't know what it does for Holy and Red, though, so maybe you can help out on that since I don't play those. Okay, yeah, so for so for Rhett, um, so it's 30 seconds. It, it, it It's attacking like a pet, um, and while, it, while it's active, you and your Guardian's attacks cause you to be infused with ancient power, increasing your strength by 1%. So the, the the whole point of um, it doesn't actually show exactly what it stacks to. I'm sure it's twenty, but I'd need to I'd need to double check that myself. Um, so so when I said earlier about ret where you don't use all of your cooldowns together, this is the reason why. Because you use this first, like you get Guardians of the Ancient Kings up, then you get the strength stacked, then you pop a Vengeance Wrath like you ordinarily would. Because you don't want to pop Avenging Wrath and this, because then when you know when this is stacking up, your Avenging Wrath is ticking down duration. So obviously you get this stacked up first, then you Avenging Wrath, so you've you've got maximum benefit. Now, when I was playing on this particular server, which I'm showing you on stream at the moment, I did have weak horrors that showed me all of this, but um, I had to reinstall it a couple of weeks ago. So um, and then when the Guardians killed as well, it does then cause like some AOE. But quite honestly, you're not using it for that. Like you're, you're never popping Guardian of the Ancient Kings as a rep paladin to get the AoE at the end of it. Um, you're using it for the stacking strength buff, and then once that's up, boom, you're then getting yeah, yeah, all your other cooldowns on at the same time. Uh, for Holy, it duplicates your... Uh, if I just go Holy so I can actually show you. Um, it basically heals what you heal. Uh, but obviously it doesn't actually show until you're in the, the relevant spec. Um, but yeah, so for Holy, while active, your next five direct heals will cause the Guardian to heal the same target for the same amount healed by your heal and friendly targets within 10 yards. So, so you like, it, it'll also do a cleave, bit, bit, a little bit like Glyph of Holy Light, as you know it in Wrath today, where it will do that heal to, to people around them for 10%. This does it no matter what the heal, but it only does it for five heals. Um, but it's still that like that that doesn't sound super powerful, but it, it fucking is. Like it's a great cooldown as a holy paladin to just burst an entire fucking raid group back up to full health. Like it is really strong. Um but for Rhett, it's kind of frustrating. Like it is one of those cooldowns, like you you as a Rhett Paladin at you at the moment, you're used to just being like fire and forget, like macro everything together and just be like, I ah, just fuck it, like, I'm gonna press buttons. Where, where, like, you, again, it just adds in, in ret to that, like, skill ceiling, like, that that complexity, where it's like, well, no, I need to use everything separate. I, I want to use Zealotry to be able to get everything rolling. I then want to use my Guardian to get the strength stacked. Then I want to use Avenging Wrath, which Avenging Wrath pretty much does, uh, I would say, exactly the same. Let me just check it. Um, but, yeah, increases damage and healing caused by 20%, so al almost exactly the same. Um, but you just can't put all of those together. But yeah, Guardian, Guardian of the Agent Kings is is one like that. That's your your big ability that you're going to get in Cat. Uh, the other the other big one, which I I do consider being a big one, is Rebuke. Actually, not not even not just for prop, not just for rep, but like even holy, being up in um again like subtle mentioned earlier. As a Holy Paladin, you're going to be using Crusader Strike to get Holy Power, which then you're going to be able to use for heals. You're in melee. So actually, as a as a Holy Paladin, as a healer, you can be included in an interrupt rotation. You can, you you, you know, like you're doing so much more than just healing. Like that makes you like super, super useful. Yeah, that, that, that's me. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rebuke that honestly, that's like one of the things I'm most excited for, for, uh, the, the ability changes in Cata is going to be so nice to actually be able to interrupt things on prop Valley. Um, probably the thing I'm least looking forward to is cleanse losing the magic damage, uh, uh, removal that feels bad because uh i mean and lots of like solos and i mean just general raid utility like we we saw it on you know faction champions for example and uh in a togc like how useful cleanse was from prop Valley, but it, it feels bad when you lose that magic cleanse but rebuke kind of makes up for it i think yeah yeah, yeah, and I I will miss that as a as a like as a rep main. I will miss uh, being able to get rid of magic effects a hundred percent. But it is only holy that can get rid of it. They they changed the whole who can dispel what in Kata quite quite drastically. But it was to make the you know the healers are the ones that can get rid of almost everything, and then like yeah, the DPS can get rid of some things. But yeah. I do agree. Bit of a shit change. It felt bad for Druid because we get ours combined into one. So it's like one uh, one curse and one poison, whereas it used to be separate. You could decurse or you could poison cleanse. And then we also had like abolish poison and it would cleanse one per second for like eight seconds. And now that's gone. Like I have to hit my cleanse now. Uh, every single time I want to get a stack of poison off and that's going to feel bad if I get like a dots from a rogue or something. So uh, I feel the same way as a druid player. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, o overall, like, yeah, the whole who can cleanse what and how you do it. Yeah. As, as gone through quite substantial changes. Um, other, other things that we get, uh, prot in particular, is there any like new additions to the toolkit subtle that prot gets that you want to talk about? um i'm trying to think beyond what we've already kind of talked about like obviously our defender now on use uh divine guardian talked about that rework a bit um inquisition i guess uh so for prod that one's a little more interesting than ret uh our use of it kind of varies based on what we're doing uh so again that was the one that increases your holy damage for a short amount of time based on how much holy power you spend and for prop eyes, it's like basically it's your bread and butter for AOE is like Inquisition and Hammer of the Righteous. The combination of those two things is like the bulk of your damage uh, for AOE. Because uh, Hammer of the Righteous, should mention, also hits all targets around you now. It hits your main target for, I think, weapon damage and then shoots out like a holy wave to everything else around the target. So it's no longer capped at uh, three total targets or four with the glyph like it was in Wrath. So it, it is really fun, like especially in like dungeons where you have tons of mobs, just uh, just spamming Hammer of the Righteous, hitting everything. You have tons of vengeance. That's a lot of fun. Um, but uh, yeah, for, uh, for AoE, basically Inquisition, you're always going to want that on you. For single target, it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, Thek from Maintankadin, who was like the he was like the grandfather of you know prop alley simming back in the day. He's kind of the best source of information we have for like a lot of this stuff. And he uh, through his sims, I'm trying to bring it up, but he had basically come up with a optimized uh, single target rotation that also used Inquisition, where you would um, shield of the righteous only if you had sacred shield, or uh, sorry, if you had, you would shield of the righteous if you had sacred duty or Inquisition currently active. And if neither of those were true, then you would Inquisition. So he found like this new rotation for prop eyes basically where you could get a little bit more damage by adding inquisition to your single target rotation which wasn't really done before that it was just kind of your aoe thing so there are going to be things like that for prop eye where um situationally you may want to use inquisition um but for aoe yeah it's always going to be pretty amazing 
Um, oh, actually, so one of my one of the changes that I kind of like for uh, Pally's in general is that we only have two blessings now. So mm. Pally Power, honestly, you probably don't even need Pally Power anymore if you don't want to. Um, cause basically, there's Blessing of Kings, which is just sort of a combination of the old Blessing of Kings and Mark of the Wild. So it increases your resist and it increases stats by like 5%. Um, so that does not stack with Mark of the Wild. So if you have a Druid in your group, you do not need to use Blessing of Kings. Uh, Blessing of Might is your only other Blessing. It's now 20% melee attack power, 10% ranged attack power, and mana per five. So it now has Blessing of Wisdom baked into it. This is going to be something you run into in like every dungeon you run, especially early on in Kata. When you cast Blessing of Might on casters, they're going to yell at you. They're going to tell you you gave them the wrong blessing. They want wisdom. They don't know it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> they don't realize blessing might is wisdom now. So get ready for that because they will be spamming you. You gave me the wrong blessing nonstop. But yeah, I, I'm a fan of that change. Obviously, it was uh, with 10-man rating in mind with them making that like a more relevant uh, raid size, reducing the number of blessings makes a lot of sense, makes it much easier to bring raid buffs, maximum raid buffs in a smaller group. It confused uh, the uh, hell out of me when I leveled on uh, White Main a year ago, and I was like, Mark of the Wild and Kings is the same. Like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it, it takes some getting used to. I just want to touch on a comment for you in chat. Um, so is Go overweight or is he wearing a big... Oh, no. Hang on. No, that was my message. Um, he what? said, <laughs> is Word of Glory useful for prop paladins? So, Yeah. Yeah, it's very good for prop paladins. Um, it just kind of depends on... Uh, it's all situational, really, because it's like if you're in a like high damage intake boss fight where your survivability is like being tested you know um you are gonna want to be using word of glory a lot for self-healing and one thing we can go back to um didn't mention when we were going through like the talents as well um the guarded by the light talent uh, if you're looking at a pro uh, mm -hmm. talent tree you'll see it increases your word of glory healing by five percent but if you put a second point in it causes any overhealing that your Word of Glory does to put a shield on you um, for that amount. So you can effectively increase your maximum uh, HP with this, like right before a big combo, like a big boss combo, big tank buster, if you wanted to, if that was like relevant to the situation. Uh, so you have that option to just like use a word of glory. Like, let's say there's like a breath and crackle or something on Neff coming at the same time. Um, you could, uh, word of glory, uh, overheal yourself with it. Give yourself a huge bubble, just extending your max HP, but also just in general, being able to do an instant cast heal on yourself as a tank is super, super valuable for your survivability. So that is something you will be doing a lot. It just kind of depends. If it's, if uh, you need to do that to survive, you'll do it. If you don't, then Shield of Righteousness, or um, they actually change it, it's now Shield of the Righteous. Uh, Shield of the Righteous or Inquisition would be your go-tos when you don't need Word of Glory for healing, but as tanks, number one job is surviving. So Word of Glory should be the first thing you're thinking about. And then even just beyond yourself, uh, like be aware of like your raid situation too, right? If you see somebody's at like 10% HP, they're about to die, throw a Word of Glory on them, you'll probably save them. Um, so just things like that. Um, I mean, it's super valuable to just have an instant heal like that. Cool, cool. Uh, there was something else as well in chat. I can't, I can't quite read chat because of towels by Diesel, who I think he's had a stroke in the last couple of minutes or something. But or, or either that, or he's just worked out how a keyboard works. Um, what was the? Oh, do rep paladins uh, can remove slow debuffs on themselves? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, how to how to freedom as 
I, I, I'd say it's not changed at all. Maybe the duration has changed slightly. Oh, I don't even think the duration's changed. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's completely the same, yeah. Yeah, but works works all, almost as you would expect in RAF. So just to answer that comment as well, uh, uncle, big uncle. Um, and then in terms of other abilities that you're going to get, just while we're on that, I mean, like if we were to look at Holy Paladin as an example, I mean, uh, I, I think Holy is going to see the most changes like when, when you get things that you're like, oh man, this is cool. You know, like Holy Radiance, being able to actually have an AoE heal, which not only is it an AoE heal, it's an expensive AoE heal. Let's let's put that out. Um, but it also generates Holy Power. But it, it looks kind of insane when you do it as well, when there's loads of people around you, and then Illumination is then going to hit everyone, your Mastery, which is going to put Absorb Shields on everyone, uh, and then you're going to get Light of Dawn, which is your, your, your end talent, which... I I kind of still say in all the years I've played, in, in all the years I've played, wow, not even Paladin, like Light of Dawn just looks incredible. Um, I was about to press it, but then my, uh, hang on, my, my holy power ran out. Um, but it looks great. And it's like a conal hill in front of you that heals everyone. And again, benefits from mastery. So like the days are gone where you, you feel like a holy Paladin is is the tank healer. But Holy Paladin is not the tank healer anymore. In fact, it isn't a tank healer anymore. It's not like, oh, yeah, you take a Holy Paladin to keep the tanks up because a Resto Druid can keep the tanks up just as well as a, a Holy Paladin can. A Holy Paladin can AoE heal just as well as a Resto Druid can. Uh, you know, it, it's more about using the right heal for the right situation, using the right cooldown for the right situation. Um, so uh, I, I, I would say that's probably... I think that about covers it in terms of new abilities for all three specs, though. But but holy man, it's got a really, uh, really, really close place to my heart because it is just such a a fun healing style as a, as a holy paladin. It's gone. No, the the days of just spamming holy light over and over again and playing whack a mole with with health bars like that is not the case anymore. You know, you're you're really putting some thought into being like right. There's big damage about to come in. I'm going to get free holy power ready, and and that's like that, that's not by spamming, you know, big hills. You're literally going to be yeah up in melee using crusader strike, using holy shocks, using your daybreak procs where you can then do double holy shocks, you know, like ready for when it comes in. You can light a dawn bang, and then start doing AOE hills, and it, it's a, it's a fun, really fun playstyle. And then you throw in taking some extra responsibility by being like, don't worry, let the rogue pump or let the warrior pump, let like whatever, I, I will interrupt this ability. And then, uh, yeah, you can really start to show your worth as a holy paladin. I know that weren't really what we're talking about. We're talking about abilities, but I just want to put it out there because it is a, uh, it changes drastically. Anyone who plays a holy paladin in Wrath and then goes into Kata and expects to be doing the same thing, you're going to be wiping over and over and over again in the first dungeon at level 80. <laughs> so subtle, is there any spells that you get at a like that has changed uh level wise that you have access to it because we just mentioned hand of freedom how it's the same ability but in wrath you can get it at level 18 and kata you have to wait until level 52 to get hand of freedom so is there anything that's changed like that because there's a lot for druid where a lot of things got kind of pushed back so it, while leveling up on the, the beta i was like man i have to wait till this level to get this ability and it seemed kind of weird for a couple of things so is there anything early on that you might have to wait a while if you're leveling up a fresh tune to get it um honestly i haven't leveled a prop and cat super recently so I'm probably not going to think of everything, but just uh, just kind of at a quick glance, uh, you get Consecration a few levels later now. Um, you're going to get Seal of Truth, which is a um, new Seal of Vengeance. They just changed the name because they used to have a different name on Alliance and Horde. Seal of Truth is just the catch-all for both now. Um you're going to get that way earlier than you used to. Um, you used to get it sometime in the 60s, I think, and that'll be at 44 now. Uh, Divine Plea, you're going to get way, way earlier too. That was level 71 in Wrath, now level 44. 
let's see what else oh blessing of might you get way later you don't get blessing of might to level 56 oh, yeah. so that's i mean that, that used to be like i mean you got that basically immediately and then you had like new ranks that's another thing to mention i guess there aren't ranks anymore in kata for spells there's only like one there's just the spell there's no rank um and like divine protection not to level 30 used to be i think like level 10 level 8 something like that so yeah it, that is going to be a little little bit of a learning curve like getting used to like when you actually get these spells now because they are a lot of them are kind of mixed up quite a bit yeah, and then one other thing that i was hoping we could touch on can, really can, quick can i can i add to that uh, just briefly because i was listening yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. time obviously yeah, yeah i may have been walking around getting ice getting drinks but i was listening um paladin is one of those actually where you get everything super early like like you're not gonna level i mean subtle probably will but you, you normal people are not gonna level as prop you know like if you're questing and stuff you're probably gonna go subtle's laughing because he's like I, I i level all my characters as prop uh, oh yeah, hundred percent. I will. I will be prod the second they let me level ten. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> if you level as Rhett, uh, I, I when I was leveling on the the beta, just going, everyone was constantly like, go and train, go and train, go and train. I was going like 15, 20 levels literally before training. It was like I didn't ten. I didn't train till about I don't know, twenty eight, twenty nine. The the next time, and then and then again, probably didn't train till about forty. And then I get like, because everything scales while you level. And if you if you feel like you've got the majority of your toolkit anyway, like you, you kind of don't need to. So it's like as a rat paladin, when you're running around leveling, you've got Crusader Strike, you've got Templar's Verdict, you've got Word of Glory. You, you don't really, oh, and Judgment, obviously in Judgment. You don't really need anything else. Of course, occasionally being able to bubble or something like that is going to save you. Being able to, you know, use Lay on Hands, it might save you at some point, but... If you're just running around, just chilling, just just leveling and questing, you, you don't really notice it. Whereas with a mage, I notice those what, what you're getting at go, where it's like, this is so weird. Why am I not getting this till this level? You know, when it's like as a mage and I can't make water until like level 38. It's like I'm actually having to go to an innkeeper and buy water as a mage at level 30 still. Like, th this is weird. As a paladin, other than not getting, yeah, like Blessed of Might until really late, I think it's a lot less noticeable. And I think that's what yeah, people been, are going to find. Yeah, I've been leveled uh, Valley recently enough. I somehow haven't gotten into the Cata beta yet. Otherwise, I would have leveled one on there. But um, it's been like probably a year since I leveled one on Cata. So can't can't quite remember all that stuff. But uh, I, I do remember it felt great leveling it. I mean, I was mostly just doing random dungeon finder stuff, but just going through spamming hammer the righteous. Like, um, uh, did did you uh, like level his tank on piece of red at all, Scott? I've I've never leveled as prop. No, no, I, I've I've tanked okay. as a prop paladin, but I've never no, no I've yeah, never yeah. been as brave to level never as prop. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, through RDF, at least when I was playing on White Man, I don't know if anything was like overtuned, undertuned, whatever. Um, like leveling the tanks through RDF, like I was like triple the rest of my group's damage combined. Like <laughs> it was insane. Like the vengeance and just spamming Hammer of the Righteous, like, like the damage meter looked ridiculous. It looked like everybody was AFK except for me, but like they were all there. Like trying to do damage and like tank damage is just so ridiculous like at those low levels that you just you just pump and it is so fun i, I just I, 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 oh, oh i'm so, sorry i've not stopped thinking about one thing you're not on the beta like have you not had a beta invite somehow no yeah i don't, I don't know i i've checked a million times that i'm like signed up i've you know logged in and out of balna i i just don't have it but somehow we'll We'll sort that out after this. Hey, that would be great. I can't believe you're not in the beta. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I can't, I can't <laughs> either. Like... I, 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 I I'm shocked. That you can't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. So, yeah, like, we're, we're, I, 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 pop, I popped a vision, I guess. I dodged it. When, like, when, when this finishes, like, send me your, 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 
yeah details we'll talk about it after this and you know, get you a beta invite like sure. i thought i I just That'd thought now everybody just signed up and got in straight away <laughs> i didn't even know was, odd, too, i didn't even know odd, anyone yeah, had to wait no. for it oh my god um yeah no we need you in so so you can tank dungeons while i level my warlock <laughs> that'd be awesome Easy. uh yeah, let's do it all right cool yeah we'll do that after this uh anything else overview wise i think like we've covered like in unholy i'm looking now uh everything holy related we've spoke about the the beacon of light changes we've spoken about light of dawn the hills they get new abilities we've spoken about prot in depth we've spoken about ret a, a reasonable amount uh, as in there, there's some there's some talents that we'll get into if we get time like selfless healer like, there's some things that are very more pvp orientated i'd say uh, but I don't think we've missed any any key abilities. You know, we spoke about Inquisition. Uh, so, do, do you want to have a look at the glyphs? We can take a look. Um, I mean, as you mentioned before, the prime. I mean, we can knock it out in like two seconds. Um, so, uh, for prop value, I'll just jump into it. Uh, for prop value, basically, glyph of seal of truth, same as. Glyph of uh, Seal of Vengeance right now. It gives you 10 expertise when you have the seal on. Um, Glyph of uh, Shield of the Righteous increases Shield of the Righteous damage. That's one of your top damage abilities. You take that. And then Glyph of Crusader Strike increases crit with Crusader Strike. Again, one of your top damage abilities, giving it more crit. Great. Um, the only like real changes here would be uh, if you're doing a fight where your survivability is really, really important and you're just trying to min-max that, you would add in uh, Glyph of Word of Glory instead of uh, Crusader Strike or instead of Shield of the Righteous. Um, since you will be using a lot of uh, Holy Power on uh, Word of Glory instead of Shield of the Righteous and won't be getting as much benefit. But I believe from Thex Sims, uh, Glyph of Shield of the Righteous still came out on top, even if you were using Word of Glory, just barely. Um, since you won't be using it every single time, you will still be using uh, Shield of the Righteous based on uh, the 20-second cooldown of Word of Glory. It won't allow you to use too many Word of Glories, unortunately. Um, and then... Uh, uh, while we're if on Prime, like, so what, what about Hammer yeah, of the Righteous? Yeah. And any is there any value there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, forgot to mention that too. Uh, so if you're doing like a lot of AOE content, like if you're running lots of dungeons, uh, Glyph of Hammer of the Righteous, really, really, really good. Um, but just depends kind of what you're doing. But that that's a fantastic glyph. So anytime you're doing lots of AOE stuff, for sure, Glyph of Hammer of the Righteous. That is like your top damage source for AOE. So boosting the damage on it's huge. Do you pair that with exorcism as well? Like the glyph of exorcism or um no, prot prot never uses glyph of exorcism. I'm not sure if any of the other specs do. Exo is only something you use like on a pull, like right before the pull, like on your opener. Okay. Or as ret as ret, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Ret, ret yeah, exorcism yeah. is massive for ret, but yeah, prot. No, no, yeah. Well, on a pole. It is literally, yeah, the only yeah. time. Um, yeah, and then the only other thing would be like uh glyph of seal of insight if you're like absolutely trying to like min max your survivability, you could throw that on instead of uh uh glyph of seal of truth, since you wouldn't be using seal of truth, you wouldn't get any benefit from that. Uh when you're like 100 percent is min maxing survivability you'd have insight on which is the combination of uh seal of light and seal of wisdom so it gives you healing and mana return um chance on hit basically uh so that that's like uh, another level of like self-sustainability you can do if you're in a situation where survivability you have to just do every little thing you can to get maximum survivability cool uh what about major um, glyphs because yeah I, I i still yeah I, I still stand by major glyphs are far more more interesting than prime 
because yeah, I, I think that goes it goes for every class though it's not like just paladin you know mage is like five percent more crit with pyroblast five percent more crit with fireball uh you know three percent more damage with this like they're they're all really really boring it's as if like they started doing the major glyphs and were like yeah these are good man like we, we can make some good make some good glyphs and then it got to a point where they were like oh fuck we need to launch next week <laughs> Quick, yeah. just, just 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 put some shit ones out. No one'll notice. I noticed. Just looking over these major glyphs, nothing's sticking out to me. Like if, as somebody that's never played prop before, uh, none of these look too uh, enticing. Yeah, <laughs> like, may, may, there's may, a lot of may, utility ones. Yeah, and the, but, but they're like meant to be fight. utility. Yeah, like so. What what kind of glyphs do we go for for major? So yeah, th this is like the utility tier that like, these are the ones you'd like really mix around a lot depending on what you're doing. Um, but uh, let me try to find a cliff uh, focus shield. Um, your Avenger shield hits two fewer targets, but 30% more damage. So if you're progging like a boss fight, like single target boss fight where all you really care about is like more Avenger shield damage, this is really good. This is like one of our highest damage glyphs we can get. And it's a major glyph, which normally major glyphs are like more utility stuff. So this isn't even like competing for a prime glyph slot, which the prime glyphs are generally the damage increase ones. So this is in essence sort of a way to get like a fourth prime glyph um, in terms of damage gain. We can but, we can speak yeah, speak that... in speak in languages that Go understands. That's like glyph of focus go. Yeah, Glyph of Starfall, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And I was thinking of that same thing, Scott. I was like, I'm now I'm wondering class by class every time we go through the rest of them, is everybody gonna have that one no uh no. major glyph? They're, they're not like, oh yes. No? Okay, so we, No, they're, they're at least, not at least Prot gets one. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, there's yeah. Uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies uh, yeah, with glyphs across classes, trust me. Uh, and we'll we'll discover those more as we uh as we do our season of discovery podcast on oh, Saturdays, gosh. talking about Cataclysm. What? Too soon? No, I love discovery. Yeah, you're missing incursions, aren't you? Sorry, so we'll carry on. Don't let that prick interrupt you. Um, no worries. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, Glyph of Focus Shield that that just is kind of a top tier one that actually like affects your damage. Of course, if you're doing like a lot of uh, dungeons and, you know, AOE stuff, you don't really want to lose the two extra hits on your vendor shield. This is just for single target damage, um, mainly for raids. Um, and then Glyph of Consecration, also another one that slightly increases your damage, not nearly to the extent of a vendor shield. But since Consecration is now a much lower priority ability for us, it may not get pressed every time, like as soon as it comes off cooldown. In fact, it often won't. Um, so increasing the duration and cooldown is uh, useful because, I mean, you get more you get more uptime um, to begin with, but you also like when it comes off cooldown isn't a huge concern because you very likely aren't even pressing it as soon as it comes off cooldown anyway. So you'd for sure rather just have a longer duration one. Makes it more mana efficient but over the course of it as well, don't it? Yeah, that that too. Yeah, like we mentioned uh, the ridiculous mana cost before too. Um, if you're pressing it less, obviously spending less mana on it. So um, yeah, this is another major glyph where you can get some small uh, damage benefit from it. So... This is a pretty common one to use. And then a lot of the other ones are just, you know, I mean, there's like Glyph of Holy Wrath. You, your Holy Wrath can now stun Elementals and Dragon can. Situationally, that could be useful. Uh, I could definitely see you running that for like Heroics. Um, Glyph of Rebuke, also like Heroics or like some fight where you're like basically interrupting on cooldown. Uh, save some mana that way. Um, the new Glyph of Salvation is kind of interesting. It, when you put Hand of Salve on somebody, it doesn't uh, permanently reduce their threat. It just makes them uh, unable to like do threat for the duration of it. 
So like you could put this on DPS, they could just pump into an ad like as much as they want. You wouldn't even have to hit it. They're not going to generate any threat on that. So there are some like interesting uses for it probably. I, haven't, I don't know of like a specific example right now, but I, I could definitely see that being useful at some point. Oh, in, in, and... in rough, every pull is a rep paladin for me. Right. <laughs> Literally yeah, just being no, able to no, put that on the yeah, start of the fight. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Currently in Wrath, like this version of Sal would be incredible. But in Cata, where like all tanks do 500% more threat and you have like vengeance, like, like there, it, it probably won't be as useful. It'll definitely be much more of a like niche use. But um, I, I could definitely see some big uses for that too at some point. I'm glad you went over that because me reading that tooltip, I thought that it was going to work kind of like a mage's mirror image in Wrath where you would still build threat, but you just wouldn't be on the threat table for like the 10 seconds of the salve and then boom, all of that threat. Yeah, no, you don't, you don't get it back. You don't yeah, get it back. Yeah, that's, that's a lot better than what I was thinking uh, that it was going to work like. Yeah. Um, I mean, long, long words, an interesting one as well. Where your word of glory heals for fifty percent less up front, but provides an additional fifty percent healing over six seconds. I know that's not prot specific, but it is like another. I mean, being a holy paladin where you're using like glyph of long word, and you've got uh, eternal glory where word of glory has got a thirty percent chance not to consume holy power. So then you can go boom. You can like almost be spreading hots around. Like that, that's quite nice as well. It's, it's again, very niche situation. I've got to be honest, it's not something that I do, but it, it, it does, it, the, yeah, it just, just adds another option of play style. Oh, one, two, uh, another really important one to mention uh, the Glyph of Divine Protection uh, removes the physical damage reduction of Divine Protection and increases the magic damage reduction. So this would turn it into a one minute cooldown, 40% magic damage uh, reduction cooldown, which I mean, depending on the fight could be really, really good. So that that's one to keep an eye on too. But that, that should be a prime glyph, shouldn't it? You know, this is where they sort of got on rock. Like that is that, like you say, that is fucking huge. Like where you're using that fight dependent. It's like, well, wait, I'm not going to lose any of my prime glyphs. Like, I don't know. I feel like they got some some of these glyphs a little bit backwards. Yeah, it's it's a little bit weird. The the prime glyphs are basically like this is your single target damage one. This is your AOE damage one. There's there's not really like a whole lot of like flavor and I guess like uniqueness to them. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean that I'd say that pretty much covers majority of the major ones the minor the minor ones are pretty boring i don't think we really need to... <laughs> i looked at it yeah like reduce the mana cost is the first yeah yeah the minor four ones are... words of all six of them yeah the, the minor ones are shit for paladin but like you know things like mages the, 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 there's different classes that actually get like reasonably like useful minor glyphs mainly like anything that's got a reagent cost you know then you, you can almost guarantee there's going to be one useful minor <laughs> minor glyph um okay all right well yeah that's glyphs that's cool i mean i i, I again i do feel like the major glyphs you're going to change more than your prime glyphs uh, no matter whether you're holy rep prot like you you're probably going to be running similar prime glyphs all the time and you'll be changing your major ones like if you if you if you care you know like enough to be changing your glyphs regularly because even glyph of light of dawn as a holy paladin where Light of Dawn affects two fewer targets, but heals each target for 25% more, where you know that's going to be useful. It's like that that's a big healing increase, but less, oh, oh you know, like you're healing less people, but you're, you're healing other people for a lot more. Um, they've got really, yeah, but it's, it's niche situations like that. Again, a really, a really good example of where that will be useful is if you're doing 10 man nef and you're at the pillar stage where there's only like three of you on a pillar anyway or four one 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 pillar's got four the other two have got three where it fills up with lava when we get to talking about raids 
some of you might understand what we're talking about, but for those of that have done NERF, you'll understand uh, where you don't need to heal five people anyway. Because odds are you're on a pillar with you plus two more people. So you might as well just have like a dorm where it heals far more. And then when you get to the electrocute stage, like it's fucking over and done with fast enough not to worry about anyway. Um, cool. All right. Well, that's that's glyphs. Go. What else? I've got a, a, a short topic, but something okay. I think should be mentioned is the the plate specialization at level fifty. So increases your stamina by five percent while wearing plate armor for uh, prot. Increases your intellect by 5% while wearing plate for holy, and then increases your strength by 5% while wearing only plate armor for the ret paladin. So uh, that's a change with uh, the pre-patch that's going to be coming to kind of get ahead of the curve if you're like a holy pally or ret, probably more so than a, a prop pally. But gearing-wise, going into Cataclysm, you're going to want to have that 5% bonus more so than not, I think. I've already started seeing people in raids saying need him for pre-patch. I, I genuinely, which yeah, is good. Yeah, that's not, yeah, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. For a few weeks. It's good. It's good though. It's good that people are like looking forward. You know, me as a as a rat at the moment, I'm using what a leather belt. Mm, I think that's it actually. As rat, I think I'm only using a leather belt. Uh, but still, you know, like I, yeah, I, I need a, I need a plate belt ready for the pre-patch because five percent strength is gonna, you know, outweigh that massively. Uh, so yeah, good point. So any of you, like, I think it's more relevant for holy paladins at the moment than anything Absolutely, else. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you're using loads of fucking cloth shit, and then uh, it go, yeah, gets to the pre-patch, and uh, but that that would, uh, yeah, that would change in the first part of the pre-patch. So yeah. Start sorting it out because that could be a matter of weeks away, not months. Weeks. What do you think about that? Yeah, I just so got that arena season. Yeah, I just got that arena season ending announcement. Um, and like for Wrath pre patch, arena season ended. You know, one day before pre patch came out. I don't think that'll be the same way it happens this time, but it does seem like it's pretty close. I was kind of thinking pre-patch would be like mid to late May uh, with like uh, late June Catter launch, just kind of based on the roadmap and based on, you know, timelines for how long betas have lasted and things like that before. But it seems like pre-patch is probably going to be coming sooner and maybe it's just a longer pre-patch, but we still do get that like later June Catter launch. But this is kind of a unique pre-patch in that like, 70 plus percent of the new content is available in pre-patch because like you get the whole revamped world and transmog um reforging uh flying in azeroth like uh the new talents everything um and like other pre-patches are typically you know maybe like 20 to 30 percent of like the new content so this would be a good one to do like a longer pre-patch for because you do get so much new content with it that there is a lot to do in pre-patch and archaeology too. Another good one to mention because everybody's going to be wanna, wanting to farm that for like their pre-raid base. So yeah, uh, I, I'd be happy with pre-patch coming soon and just last in, you know, six to eight weeks. Well, but so I've spoke about this on stream earlier, and I don't know if Go was there because he looks happy. He looks like he's smiling, but it could be my small camera. Um, I was going to say small, but no mind. Uh, they can't speed it up. Like, uh, they actually genuinely can't. So, flying didn't come in the pre patch, by the way. Flying in Azeroth didn't come until Catalog. Oh, really? um, but I do think we will get it. In the in, in the pre-patch this time, but the 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 very final weeks of the pre-patch, but it, like the cat pre-patch is so unknown, as in like everyone knows what's going to happen, as in the talent update, the world revamp, and all of that shit, but no one really remembers what order it came in. Um, but they would really struggle to speed it up. Like the, I, I'd say the shortest the pre-patch could possibly be is six weeks. Uh, and and Stark saying technically it did like because you know, he's trying to catch me out and I know what he's trying to do because uh, he's a dick. Um, he's trying to catch me out because the 
what happened originally is you could buy um azeroth flying for 5k but it was meant to be masters ride master riding like the the 310 speed so in the pre-patch originally you could fly in azeroth but then they hot fixed it like two days later uh because it weren't meant to be that uh but the way the pre-patch works is obviously we've got four weeks of invasions so like the four weeks of invasions happen in the old world not the new world, not the shattering. So, so like we're gonna have a week or two minimum of of the systems patch where we get new talents, we get all of that stuff. Then you've got four weeks where it's like progressive, where you get the invasions going on all over the world. That includes Outland and Northrend, um, and then eventually the final week is where the invasions start happening in the home cities. So like Stormwind will be under attack and you'll get like a progress bar where you've got to barricade the city up. You've, you know, you've got to close the rifts. You've got to do all of that. And then when you defend it, you can then go and kill one of four bosses, which drops 251 gear. Uh, so you'll be able to kill like uh, Fiadras or whatever name is, you know, Princess in Moradon, um, Flame Lash in Blackrock Depths, um, the fucking air boss where you get uh, fucking Thunder Fury from, like, I can't even remember what his name is. But him, you know, where you, so you've got like those four bosses to kill, which then will you, you'll get a portal from your home city, or you can queue using RDF, like you would for any other world event. Like if you was doing a horseman or diabrew or whatever you're doing, uh, and then once that's all done, then the shattering happens, and then that's when the new quests come in, warg and goblin, which again didn't come in until uh, actually Cata went live. Same with flying, but. Blizzard have already said we're getting Wargan and Goblin during the pre-patch, so it's got to be at that point. So on the basis, of, I fucking I hate the fact I feel like I'm talking so much. Uh, but like the you know we're gonna get yeah, this is annoying me. Go don't laugh. Um, but we're gonna get like four weeks of the invasion that they can't speed up because it's gated. You've got a week where the invasions start happening. You do the Twilight Cult quests. The second part un unlocks more Twilight Twilight quests where you're trying to stop the invasions happening. The third part then opens even more quests, like eight or nine part quest chain. And then the final part is when they start invading the, the cities. So unless they like crush that down somehow where it was happening every two or three days, you know, where then you could have it in two weeks. But it happened in the, the world as we know it now, you know, not the shattering. It was like when the elemental shit finished, then um, the, the shattering happened. But the reason they shouldn't slow it down is because the bosses dropped 251 loot. It's like a fucking brilliant time to get catch-up gear, but you can only get catch-up gear for seven days. So I almost actually want it to be longer than it was before. Like, like maybe crush the first three weeks down into a week so you can do the whole quest chain, but then have like three weeks where you can actually go in and do the dungeons and get the 251 catch-up gear. Uh, and then the shattering happens, and then we've got like two weeks or... Something. Two weeks would be perfect. Two weeks of goblins and wargans and flying in Azeroth, leveling your, your archaeology, and then boom, we're into Kata content. It's such a fucking convoluted pre-patch for Kata. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't realize it was like that. I I remembered the elemental invasions and kind of like all the stuff, but I, I kinda thought we had like the new world and everything right when the pre-patch hit. So that's interesting. Um but i mean so coming up soon i think we have they just announced season four for retail is like april 23rd so i i feel like they would give that room to breathe probably uh like at least a week maybe two before they would do cata pre-patch but i'm not sure um yeah but i mean i i'd love i i just want cata like if we can get pre-patch asap that'd be great for me yeah i, I just like, like the talents and that Sorry, go. But, uh, yeah, like the talents and that, you know, so like get the first bit of the pre-patch out and give us a two, three weeks with the talents. But the thing is, when we get the talents, then um, the, the one thing I don't like about the pre-patch is ICC instantly goes to the new lockout system. Whereas I'd like them to not do that because we've got our new talents, but now we can oh, only do yeah, 10 or does. 25. Yeah, so I'd like them yeah, to get rid of that. I didn't realize that happened. Yeah, that is kind of unfortunate. 
I tell you what, one good thing as a tank that you'll like is when that happens, the chill of the throne goes. So you instantly gain twenty yeah, percent yeah, dodge. I, I did see that. <laughs> I did see that. That's gonna be nice. Uh, get that twenty percent back finally. Um, do you happen to know? Does the Halion uh, Twilight Precision go away at the same time? I couldn't find any. No, no, not as far as I'm aware of that. No. Okay. Uh, but they yeah. they probably just didn't care about Ruby Sanctum at that point, so they probably just didn't touch it. Yeah. It's kind of a bummer. Like it's so hard to get people to do that raid right now. Like I, I run, I've been running like several groups, all like phase four, phase five. And like very few groups even want to like go into Ruby Sanctum. Cause like even groups have killed it already. Like there's a high chance of wiping and we don't even have like the real like difficulty level of it either. Like we have an easier version cause like the ads still don't get a damage increase from their like stacking buff you still don't get the ground effects that are present in like both the twilight and uh regular realm at the same time so it, it's kind of unfortunate we didn't even get to do like the regular like difficulty level of Halion. and it's also just kind of unfortunate people don't even want to do like the newest raid either but oh yeah. I, i'm with you bring on Kata. no no but i'm with you with ruby sanctum so like i i've i had a i had like a i don't know 6 to 8 week break from raf I was still logging on. Like, if the guild needed me, I went and raided. But, like, I didn't sign up. It was just like, oh, they'll message me 10 minutes before the raid starts. And they're like, we're missing someone. Can you join? And I'd go and join. Um, it's got to the point now where, where, like, we clear, like, Lich King Heroic dies. And then everybody more, or less, they might as well just log off. Because they go to Ruby Sanctum and they clearly don't want to be there anyway. <laughs> you know, it's like, like they switch their brain off. And I'm like, they're doing ruby sanctum thinking how how could we possibly even be fouling at this there's nothing going on there's like there's one mechanic outside one mechanic inside can you move through the boss outside yep on the inside can you avoid four beams that are very very predictable yeah like yeah, why are we wiping uh so even i'm like oh just fuck ruby sanctum but i i'd i, I would like happily do it it's not a bad raid i don't think ruby sanctum's a bad raid it's just Bad Raiders. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of the better uh, raid fights we've had. All of ICC, or not ICC, but uh, Wrath. Um, one of the better fights of the entire expansion, but just, I guess, came out at the wrong time. Uh, I thought it should come out during TOGC, like maybe, uh, you know, tune it so it's like more doable, like in TOGC gear, lower the eye level of the gear from there. But, um, TOGC seemed like the perfect time to bring that out because like there wasn't as much going on and putting in a fight like that would have been really cool at that. And the funny thing is, if you'd have said that, if you was on a podcast with me six months ago, I'd have disagreed. I'd have, I'd have said, no, well, no, it's at the end of the expansion. Like It's harder. Like I would have disagreed, but now I agree. I, I think that is absolutely what they should have done. But me being like, stubborn played loads of rap private servers i'm like well no ruby sanctum comes after icc but actually i think you're a hundred percent right like it, it would have been such a better experience to have that little bridge of a gap between togc and icc and then when the lich king dies the expansion's over like now it's officially over not like the lich king dies and oh wait there's this this dragon that no one gives a shit about that we now need to go and kill you know so, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that was that was always weird to me that the Lich King is not the final boss of Wrath of the Lich King. Like, I mean, it's such an epic, iconic fight. Like, I mean, it's a reason a lot of like just, you know, uh, Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne. Like, it's a reason a lot of people even got into WoW in the first place. So just like all these factors, it's like he really should be like the final boss of the expansion, not just some random uh, setup for the next expansion that just got thrown into like um, tied people over because ICC lasted like a full year last time. Always felt bad. Yep, I agree. Uh, Go, you had something really important to say. It was so important. I know I can't wait to get it out there, but uh, I was you were getting me hyped for that uh, that incursion event. And then you said two five one gear, and I was like, ah, fuck that! I don't care about two five one loot. 
Yeah, but you've that also... Was that was my important thing to say. Oh, that was it. But yeah, and it's not incursions. We're not playing sub, mate. Um, but it, it, yeah. It, Did I say it, incursions? You said incursion. We're talking about invasions. Oh, different diff, di different game. Um, but it, I mean, you were close enough with your wording. I, I did it, it started, for 10 hours. It so. started with an I. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I but, was so, up, but like... so does idiot, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of other I words. <laughs> I was looking up uh, the eye level of the gear. So if you make a template character, I'm assuming that's the the same gear that you would get if you bought like a level 80 boost. And it looks like it's 232 eye level. So if you were to buy a level 80 boost, then that would that event would uh, get you a little bit of a head start going into Hyjal or Vashir. Yeah, but what what you got to think about is uh, like well, well, where it's weird. So again, this is this is oh man, I sound like anti Kata now. I'm not, but. When you actually think about the way the pre-patch is going to work, it's kind of backwards. Because it's like the time where everyone's going to be leveling is going to be the post-shattering. Where you can do goblins, you can do wargons, everyone's going to be like, fucking goblin hype or wargon hype, like, let's level. But the invasions have already happened. So you're not going to get that 251 gear. Do you know what I mean? It'd be nice if they was going to make a change to the pre-patch they kept the invasions going all the way to the end, which sort of lore wise or whatever don't really make sense because the invasions was the build up to the shattering happening but then th does that make sense i'm like i'm not struggling to put words yeah, to it yeah. but yeah you know like <laughs> that it's going to be the shattering time when you've got all the 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 old zones now as new leveling zones where you're going to be leveling but you can't go and get the catch up gear which is 251 gear from the invasions because the invasions have now finished yeah, that does feel kind of weird. I wonder if they could just like after the invasions finish, you just throw that into like gammas or something, like make it drop from final bosses and gammas just to make it available. Yeah, yeah, that that would work. Or they just literally have the sort of random dungeon fight, not random dungeon fighter, but you know, like dungeon finder, you can still just queue for a random rift. So like you queue yeah, for it, right. yeah, and, and sure. you just go and kill that boss and. Like, yeah. yeah, it would be different yeah, from what it was that's before. Not in but... the open world. Yeah. yeah. All that instant stuff. Yeah. That seems like it'd be easy for them to just keep around. It seems like the open world parts of the invasion would be the harder part. But yeah, if uh, it's just instant stuff, should be easy. Well, then the, mm -hmm. the questing gear in Hyjal starts you off at 272 eye level, like rewards. So yeah. So it, it doesn't it, matter too much. It's kind of, yeah. It, it's a big jump, like 20 eye levels, 21 eye levels. So, if you got that incursion gear. <laughs> fuck, invasion. Yeah, get the fuck out, go. Go back to your sod podcast, you cunt. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, so the, the, the thing, um, I just want to, like, on that go, no, you did you did spur me on to a good point, I think. Um, what's funny when people say, like, should I gear? So this can be paladin specific. Let's, let, let's, let's fixate on paladin. Like, should you worry about getting your paladin as much gear as possible before Kata? But the answer's um, no. Uh, and it's it's weirdly no because and i can't even remember who it was but someone in my stream chat said it and i was like do you know what that makes fucking like a lot of sense you get like you've got lots of gear from the raid let's say you're full bis like subtle no doubt like full bis he's going to go into hyjal and it's going to be face roll he's not going to look at any loot that that comes from the quest he's like well i'm not going to need any of this shit and then you hit deep home and you're like what the fuck just happened like all of a sudden deep home like you're literally you're struggling to kill two mobs at a time you're getting hit for like 10 percent of your health at a time so it's sort of a double-edged sword because you you can go in with loads of gear and it's going to help in high jewel, but you're not going to feel the slow power spike as you're getting upgrades from quests so when you hit deep home and you're just running around in your ict 25 gear it feels like it's a big shock to the system. And trust me, I've done the same. I was a mage. I was running around in Hyjal, fucking living, bombing stuff, just blowing everything up, not worrying about my health. And then I went to Hyjal and uh, went to Deep Home and died fighting two mobs. And was like, this is this this is weird. So actually, it's like, you can get pre-raid, you, you, well, not pre-raid, but you, you can get like full BIS ICC gear, go in Hyjal and you're going to find it very easy. But then like, trust me you're gonna wish you started looking at what what quest gear was like available as rewards with more stamina on because you will need it 
I feel like trinkets might be something though. Like the gear, probably not too important. But I think Scotty, even on your mage, I think it was that uh, you still had like your same trinket at level eighty-five that you leveled all the way up with the, uh, uh, the eyeglass or something. Muradin. So like, yeah, Muradin. I'm yeah, still using you. Yeah. So, so maybe trinkets might hold a little bit more value, more so than like your helm, cloak, neck rings, stuff like that. I think I think trinkets and weapons hold a lot of value. Um, and and like to a point, you could say set bonuses. But if we were talking about paladin, like which which this podcast is about, go, it's not about incursions. Um, like you, you you know your set bonus with divine storm that's gone by the way, when the pre patch goes, uh, when the pre patch comes. So like. You know, don't think you're going in resetting your Divine Storm on, you know, when you're running around leveling. So there's some set bonuses that hold. Like, again, I'm using Mage and Paladin as examples because they're what I've leveled most recently. Uh, but, you know, like a Mage, when you mirror image, you're still going to your 18% damage. Like 18% damage, that's obviously, that's sizable. But you're not mirror imaging on every pull. So it's like, yeah, it's sizable if you're like killing a mob that's got a, a decent amount of health, but you'd still be better off with the extra health by just upgrading the item level of your gear. And, and as a rep paladin, like if you're going in with like thinking, oh, I've got my two set, this is going to be awesome. Well, no, it, it changes. It's just like 5%, 5% seal damage. I think it turns into something like that. I can't remember. It's something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what changes here. I haven't looked at all that stuff, but um, as far as like just, you know, having gear going into Kata, it really only matters if you're trying to push early, like be one of the first people to like get through Hajjal and like get ahead of the pack, get to Deep Home kind of thing. Um, if you're just kind of a regular player, just playing through it normally, um, you're not trying to race anybody, like, the gear's not really going to matter that much. You're going to get 272 quest gear, like as you're leveling through Hajjal up to 284, I think it goes to by the end of Hajjal. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it, the gear's not really going to be a big deal. But when when Kato's like imminent, you know, we have a launch date, uh, pre patches here, people are like playing the new character, they're excited to play. Like people are just going to want to raid and they'll be excited to get gear on it either way. So, um yeah i mean you know you really don't need to like min max your gear uh, most people won't um for like cattle launch but yeah just just have fun and pre-patch play play what you want and don't worry too much about the gear pre-patch is gonna be weird when it when it comes to like yeah lockouts in particular as i say that that that's one thing that i hope they do change i, I know this is not paladin specific but I'd still like to, with all my new shiny talents, I'd like to be able to do ICC 10 and 25 during the pre-patch. I feel like that's quite an unnecessary change, which, you never know, if we all make enough noise, me, you, Go, and, like, the other four people that are going to play, play Kata, because I, I believe there's only, like, seven of us that are playing Kata because it's such a dead game. Uh, like, if we all make enough noise, I reckon Blizzard might listen. Yeah, I think there's a good chance they might change that. Yeah, because it would open up uh, catch-up gear even more if you could do the raid twice instead of limited to once. Did it's... they change the eye level of the no. gear in 10 and 25? That's going to stay the same? No, it stayed the same, which is the stupid thing. If they then said, right, you can only do 10 and 25, but 10 man started dropping the 25 gear and tw 10 heroic was dropping 25 heroic, then you'd be a little bit more like, okay, all right, that's cool. I can go and do a 10 heroic. And... I'd, I'd love that. Yeah, yeah, and I'd be down for that. I'd, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, cool. Right, do that. But you can't, like, split the lockouts but not change the gear. Like That, that goes against what the cat lockout system's all about, doesn't it? So, you know, but if they done that, I, I like, e either way, either don't do that during the pre-patch and let us do both, or you can only do one, but you can get the same gear. But then there is some 10 heroic gear that's really good still. You know, I, I'm not saying Biss, but yeah, that's true. It's not Biss. Fuck it. Like, there's no one. There's no <laughs> class that's got Biss from 10 Heroic. So, yeah, fuck it. Just put 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 the, the loot the same from both. So, professions? Do you, do you want to talk about professions? Is it going to change for Prop Pally from uh, 
wrath into Kata. I'm I'm still thinking about incursion, Scotty. I'm sorry. I, like that word won't get out of my head now. <laughs> Mate, don't make me go blazing Bob on you and mute you because I will. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's talk about professions. I think that's actually a really good a really good topic for paladins because. Um, I, I mean, I've got a really good point about Rhett, less, less holy, um, and I'd imagine, I reckon Subtle's probably got a good point about prop when it comes to professions. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, what I'm going on all my things is engineering and alchemy, uh, get the pre helm, get the pre trinket, on top of just the baseline benefits each of those has, um, getting a pre item is you know it kind of just blows every other profession out of the water on its own but then you add in you know the baseline effects of those professions and yeah it those are the two clear winners for me um obviously those will get replaced at some point uh engineering i think will remain valuable the rest of the expansion alchemy you could potentially change that later if you want but i think the increased uh mastery and resist and armor from uh mixology i think that'll be really solid and you probably won't care to even change the profession but early on having that that alchemy trinket is going to be huge if you're trying to do like heroic raids early on and then you do also have other options you aren't it's not required that you're you know ng alchemy you also have leather working. Um, leather working gets 155 stamina above replacement compared to other professions that get 120. So you could gain 35 stamina above replacement as a leather worker. However, most tanks, and I mean specifically prop A, you really want mastery, not stamina. So you're getting more value above replacement, but it isn't for the stat you actually want. Uh, as your number one stat anyway. So that lowers the value a little bit of that. Um, you do get the drums of speed though too from leatherworking, which is nice. Uh, group, you know, movement speed effect. That is great for like speed running and then, you know, just helping group get out of mechanics and stuff. Um, and then other options are like blacksmithing, which gives you 80 stats um, between the two sockets 80 stats above replacement or 120 stamina above replacement and it will increase up to a hundred i believe stats above replacement and i think it's 150 or 150 stamina above replacement i can't quite remember how the epic gem affects it but uh it in any case by the end of the expansion it um blacksmithing gets better uh jewel crafting will be like uh 81 stats above replacement so you get one extra stat not really a big deal in phase one um but the value of jc will decrease as the expansion goes on because once those epic gems are available then um their value above replacement obviously gets lower because the baseline gem that you're putting that uh chimera eye into is a better gem so that brings JC down to, I forget the exact number, but somewhere around 50 stats above replacement instead of the 81. So, um, yeah, I think those are the main ones. Uh, I mean, mining, you get toughness, you can get some stam, but again, mastery is really what you'd prefer. So it's not a huge, huge deal, I don't think. Um, just as long as you've got some combination of those professions but for me personally i'm going engineering alchemy on all my characters all my tanks that fucking shocked me that really like really did yeah. And, that, and that, yeah yeah and, that, and honestly that that is why i love talking to someone who really knows what they're talking about when it comes to tanks because i really expected you to say level work is a no-brainer like, 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 I, I yeah, genuinely I was, did. Like, mining too, yeah. Like yeah, the stamina. the value of stamina is just lower now because of like the way damage happens. Because but, like, but, uh, but you're not gonna okay. put you're not gonna put mastery on your braces, are you? Uh, no, it'll it'll be dodge instead. It'll be the fifty dodge enchant, which still goes towards your combat table coverage. 
so that so that's where i was like well like e even though stamina isn't as powerful as mastery like it like none of your professions are gonna give you mastery do you know what i mean well unless you went uh, yeah unless you was putting mastery gems in as, as, as jc e exactly yeah yeah you'll be doing the mass gems yeah you're still gonna be putting stam in like yeah, yeah so yeah taking jc away but like something else you're still gaining stamina. So, like, the most stamina you can gain as a tank would be level working, even though it's not as powerful as mastery. Does that make sense? You know, as in, you're not going to yeah, get mastery yeah, I mean, from that... anything else outside of JC. Um, I mean, from blacksmithing, you will, because with the new oh, stockets, yeah, you're yeah. going to be with, with blacksmith. In. Absolutely. Um, with alchemy, you will, because the mast elixir you use will be increased um oh you'd use mastery of... elixir would you as a, as, as a yeah thing? yeah like mass elixir plus armor elixir or mass elixir plus resist elixir i have to double check that the uh, resist elixir actually stacks but from what i've read it should but that's something i'd need to verify um but yeah the mass elixir plus um armor but yeah just uh ehp in general effective hp um it's just less valuable now just because of like the way damage happens like you have more time to react to damage it, you aren't just going to get like globaled like in in wrath um so that brings the value of stamina down which um increases the value of damage prevention like mastery since it's block chance which is you know with the meta gem 31 percent minimum reduced but, but, uh, but with damage. Ven but with vengeance does the cost of stamina not go up yeah, that so that's the other thing too. Um, so that would just be purely for like a survival standpoint, the uh, mastery. Mm -hmm. But um, with uh, with vengeance, it, as we talked about before, it's your stamina plus ten percent base HP. So every point of stamina you put in, and you will have a lot of stamina multipliers as well. You're getting HP, but you're also getting attack power for each of those, uh, each of the, each point of uh, stam. So that is pretty nice for like uh, total value, but again, the stam isn't like really helping you survive a whole lot. But getting the extra attack bear, I mean, is always nice. Um, and then there are a couple of things that scale with like HP, like like percent HP effects. Um, I can't think of any for like prop value other than like the AD heal off the top of my head. Um, but like, uh, blood decay, for example, has like more scaling with like max HP, um, with like AMS and things like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, personally, I'm looking at going more of the like master out for like early heroic, uh, raid pushes, but as like a phase goes on and like maximizing survivability isn't as important, then you could go more of the stam route. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm right. Like, yeah, I, I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, I, like it's just, just really you're wrong, subtle. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. It's this is why it's really <laughs> interesting to get the point of view from an actual tank because I'm not a tank. You know, like I, I just look at the profession. And I'm like, right, which one's going to give me the most stamina? Oh, it's level working. That's got to be best then. You know, I didn't even think about using mastery elixirs. You know, I would just get a, a stam a stam flask and be like, well, I'm sorted. No, that's me done. Give me some food. I, let, let's go and tank. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't think outside of that. So, yeah, like I don't want you to think that I'm saying, no, you're wrong, I'm right. That really oh, no is not worries. the case. No yeah, it, it's more the, like, it, it amazed me that I was like, oh, shit, yeah, like, yeah th there are other things that you can do other than using stamina flasks. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean... The, the, this is uh, like, as I said before, I don't have like a ton of private server cat experience, but I've been, you know, reading a ton of the old main tank and stuff and um, just trying to get as much knowledge as I can. That's where I'm at with it right now. Maybe, you know, maybe I get new information. My thinking will change on it. But um, yeah, at the moment, that's where, where I'm at. Basically, mastery everything, uh, including like Elixir and... Um, you know, doubling that with like armor resist elixir. Yeah, no, that's cool. As I say, me, I, I'm I'm very much like uh, 
I'm like, oh, fuck my survivability. That's what healers are there for. Like, give me more stamina, which is going to give me a bigger health pool, which then I can go, <laughs> look at that peasant. He's got no health compared to me. And I'm going to get more attack power from vengeance. You know, this is why you're you're the thinker. I'm uh, just the person that asks you what I should do to tank. <laughs> nah, but we all got to have our role, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Scott, did, did you want to do Rhett and Holy professions really quick? Or? Uh, yeah, so Rhett is uh, Rhett's a difficult one because uh, like Rhett really could change dip, like uh, on phase, like 100%. So, like, using, if we're saying very early gearing in phase one, um, you've got the, you've got the BOE, tri well, actually, early gearing in phase one and phase two, if we're saying Firelands is phase two, because you've got two very, very strong strength trinkets, which have got an on-use ability that you want to use. So in Blackwing Descent, you've got one, uh, hang on, let me just see if I can put it on screen. I, surely I've got it. No, I don't think I have. I mean, my paladin's holy main spec. Why would I have it? Um, but you've got, um, yeah, you've you've got an on use strength trinket. It it will make sense when I actually get to my point. Uh, and then the same in phase two, where in Firelands you're going to have a very like it's a BOE trinket that drops, which is a, a very strong strength user on use trinket. Now the biggest difference between engineering in Kata and Wrath is your glove enchant which is obviously huge uh if i went on to a character that's got engineering um is it's it shares a cooldown so the mo like if you want to get maximum value out of engineering you have to be uh, you have to be using equip trinkets so i can i can actually demonstrate this on stream if you look like on my gloves on my druid I've got the engineering trinket on which uh, engineering glove enchant on which gives 400 uh, 480 intellect agility or strength so it's going to be agility. If I press it I then I I can't use my my trinket for 10 seconds until the 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 glove goes down. And when the glove goes down I can then use the the trinket. So even though you're getting 480 of your primary stat that you want it gains more value the more of those things you can stack stack on top of each other. Do you know what I mean? So if you're using two equip trinkets where the glove enchant has absolutely, like, it doesn't matter. You just use it whenever you want and everything's going to stack together. That's great. Um, so as a rep paladin specifically, when two phases of content, the first two phases of content, you actually do quite, quite rely on a used trinket. Engineering suffers a little bit. But then when you're actually in full bis for both of those phases, you won't be using either of those trinkets. So engineering's really weird, is what I'm trying to say. I would, I am still going in as engineering on a paladin, just because I'm thinking like, well, I don't really care about while I'm gearing up. Uh, you know, I, I want to just be worrying about when I'm full bis and pumping, like what can I do with everything I've got? But it's something that's worth bear, bearing in mind. Like, it loses value. Uh, and then all the other professions, honestly, don't really matter as rep. Whatever you, whatever you want to be. Yeah, you're going to get an average of 80 attack power. Like, exactly like Subtle said, you know, dual crafting will lose value. Uh, blacksmithing will gain value. So early on, but then again, tailoring is fucking mental for everyone. Like, outside of healers, because you're probably not going to need the spirit proc on your cloak, but a thousand attack power from tailoring as a melee. So as Rhett, tailoring, I, I, tailoring engineering, I would probably say is best with two equipped trinkets. And then I'd probably say, like, tailoring JC for, for a, a used trinket where you want the static bonus during your, your, your trinket use. But it will be so close. It probably won't even fucking matter. You know, we're talking like tens of DPS. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much yeah, what that, I'm that's another thing to keep in. That's another thing to keep in mind is like the stats in Kata, they get like so absurd, like thousands and thousands of like stats. Like having, you know, a, a few stat difference between a profession, like is not something you're ever going to notice. Um, at the highest, highest level, sure, you want to like, 
totally min max, but like for ninety nine percent of players, like as long as you're one of some, you know, depending on the spec, one of some collection of maybe five professions, uh, you're gonna be totally fine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, and for holy, so, whatever you want, like honestly, for holy, you're you're gonna get eighty in on on all of them. I wouldn't go tailoring as alchemist because the RNG aspect of getting some spirit from your your cloak. All right, yeah, it's nice. It's a little bit of regen, but I'd still rather get a static eighty intellect, you know, from something else, which is gonna be spell power, crit, all of that stuff, you know. Uh, I was. Do you want to talk about incursions? To... Go. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So the I go. I would go to Ashen Vale. The top right corner is where the Emerald <laughs> Portal is. And <laughs> no, but uh, stat prio subtle. You've mentioned uh, multiple times that mastery is like a really big stat that you go for. Is there like a mastery crit, like mastery then crit then haste, or like how does stat prio work for pro? It's not like super simple because like obviously some stats are only for survivability then stam is like kind of a middle ground where it like gives you attack power so it's like threat and survivability and then there's like the stats that are only for like you know threat and damage so you you really just have to you know think about your specific raid what your goals are what kind of fights you're doing like to dictate how you're gearing but in general to start off with like as i mentioned a million times survivability is your number one goal as a tank so you're looking at mastery dodge parry and some stamina you need enough stamina that you cannot be bursted down but that is like a pretty low bar to reach um so yeah you're Combat table coverage is really, really important for prop eye because with the new way block works, 31% reduced damage, we want to push normal hits off the table because that makes the worst outcome of an attack against us 31% reduced damage. That's like over half a like shield wall kind of ability. Like that's a ton of damage. So if we can make that outcome the worst thing that can happen to us, our survivability just goes through the roof. So we're trying to stack mastery to push as many of those normal hits off the table as we can. And then dodge and parry now have the same diminishing returns. So before parry like diminished at a much higher rate in wrath. So you would stay away from parry a lot of the time because of that. Um, now dodge and parry have the diminish at the same rate. So you want to keep them roughly equal the rating on them because they're going to diminish at the same rate. So if you have like a thousand dodge and 500 parry, your dodge is really diminished and your parry has a lot of room before it reaches the same uh, DR as your dodge is at. So you would like to bring those closer together. Ideally, they'd be basically the same. Um, so that that's for like survivability gearing. And then Stam, just like enough to survive burst basically. And then as far as like damage and threat go, our most important stat is expertise up to soft cap, which is 26. And then we want 8% hit. And then after that, this is where our priority changes a little bit from wrath. Now we actually want hard cap expertise. Uh, and wrath, it was strength after uh, soft cap expertise and hit cap. Uh, now we go right for that hard cap expertise after that's for prop eyes. That's our next best thing. And I should mention too. Uh, so this is from the main tank it in like old, uh, theory crafting, uh, forum. This was like the peak theory crafting back in the day, but it was, it was based on 4.3 the the 4.3 patch but it what these sims were with dragon soul gear so things could change in like earlier phases um since we obviously won't have dragon soul gear so that is one thing to keep an eye on uh these things could change in like phase one gear um 
Let me, I think I actually have it right here. I can pull up the other parts. Um, so then after, after uh, you cap expertise, um, then strength is kind of the next best thing, but it's only a little bit better than uh, stam and haste or i might be looking at the wrong thing uh just better than stam um so i mean generally you just take this stam because if uh you know if strength on its own is barely giving you more damage than stamina like you'd rather just get a lot more hp you know to go to go along with that damage so as far as like damage gearing, that's basically how it would go. Um, you'd go for uh, expertise soft cap, hit cap, expertise hard cap, and then probably stamina, but you could do strength. Scotty would go strength. I know he would. <laughs> I, 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 I'd have went strength before everything else, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, I'm going full strength as much as I can because Subtle told me to. That's what I took away from that conversation. <laughs> Oh man, in, in wrath, I, in wrath, I support that. But no, <laughs> yeah, maybe not in car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was a slut when it came to yeah, just just being like full full DPS gear. As long as I'm crit immune, like full DPS gear, crit immune, prop value uh, in wrath. It, it, it's a it's a fun way to play a uh, tank. I love it. <laughs> exactly. So I think the one stat that I was looking for was crit. I don't know if you said crit at all is crit just like the worst stat for a tank to prioritize like it you reforge away from um, crit you don't go for crit gear at all like yeah you don't really go for crit um on Thex list he has it uh like after like that stamina strength uh he has it off the, off the spirit kind of so yeah <laughs> um yeah so i mean it is it's like above uh haste i guess i guess that's like kind of the only like offensive stat it would be above um so yeah you're not you're not really going for crit um well prop, yeah. prop, prop on, on... doesn't benefit from haste the same way the ret does that's the problem well not not the problem you know you know but the reason why it drops down massively is yeah um obviously uh ret benefits from haste because it reduces the cooldown of crusader strike and divine storm whereas prot don't get that so that that makes like a yeah a, a big difference i would say so that makes gearing kind of difficult if you're trying to do like a off tank role for paladin because your gear is gonna have to change a lot going from ret to try to tank yeah, yeah, yeah. it's completely different too, right? it's completely like... different it's completely different like subtle will be okay. using gear with dodge mastery expertise mastery like yeah yeah like he'll be using actual tanking gear like mm -hmm. i'm not saying he... feral it wasn't like that right no feral's feral, not, was kind feral of... was not like that because you can go crit mastery in both in both specs uh i mean gems make a make a difference for feral obviously like but but you're lucky because there's so many places where like um and again it does it does apply to other tanks it don't just apply to feral but you know like when you get to honored with avengers of hydral you know you can buy a belt and you can instead of buying one you buy two you buy one that you put agility in and you buy another one that you put stamina in like that's it boom you just hit one uh, and you'll get a cloak and you 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 know you'll enchant it for tanking you'll enchant it for for dps like feral will get an easier time like let's not pretend that a prop paladin's going to be off tanking because that's not going to be the case there might be a couple i don't know uh de definitely i don't think there will be at the highest level but i mean oh but you could I, I but you could yeah 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 i mean you you almost you 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 sold me earlier on on like you know I, i've always been no feral tank is the only off tank in cow like uh, that that was my that was my view going into this podcast and then when you mentioned about the whole vigilance change for warriors i was like oh wait we've got a second one like actually that that works as an off tank as well you know because that's the main thing in it like a feral loses nothing 
Like, they don't need Vigilance to do damage in Cat. But when you've got, like, the other tanks that do rely on Vigilance to actually do decent amounts of damage as the like, off tank... Oh, we'll see. I, I hope I'm wrong. Like, you know, I prop Paladins are yeah. amazing main tanks and off tanks. I mean, yeah, Fer Feral's going to be the, the number one choice, it looks like. But I, I think for the majority of groups that, you know, aren't really, like, going for week one, full hero clears and stuff like that, I think they'll be fine with a prop value off tank, too. Oh, okay. So that's an interesting question. I know it's not Paladin, but do you think we're going to see week one Sinestra kills? Um, I think so. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's harder than 0% Hero Glitch King. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, what was your thinking on uh, why we might not? Uh, no, I, I, yeah, I still think we will, but I don't think we'll see, see as many. Like, I, I still think some of the bosses with, um, I suppose it depends how long we get. You know, between uh, like it launching and then the raids opening. I think with low levels of gear, like we've not... Yeah, so Heroic Lich King, we're talking... That's the end of the expansion. You know, we're basically comparing BWD, Bastion of Twilight and that. We're comparing it to Nax or Karazhan and Magferrod and Grawl. Do you know what I mean? Like we're talking first tier content. Sure. Uh... Comparing it to ICC, obviously, yeah, that's a different beast. But comparing it to the first tier of any other any other expansion, I'd say this is the hardest opening raid tier that we, we've seen so far in Classic. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think it's probably going to be what they normally do where we get something like a Monday release for GAT and then a week from that thursday we get like the raids coming out so we'll probably have like 10 days somewhere around there i think so we'll be going into our first raid with a lot of 359 gear which is you know the the normal raid eye level so like people who are really motivated they're gonna have you know their tolbrod exalted trinket they're gonna have all their rep exalted uh 359s they're gonna have their archaeology 359s they're gonna have um possibly even boe 359s just world drop ones they're gonna have crafted 359 boes so a lot of the like very highly motivated like top end people are gonna have almost an entire set of 359 gear going into their first raid so i feel like that's gonna be like a pretty huge difference and that like you're basically you're going into the raid already decked out and that raid's like normal mode gear so i think in that way like kind of um i think the comparison is still decent like with icc but um yeah i mean we'll, we'll see i'm excited i i think the first tier of raids is like so good i absolutely love that tier that's like the only tier i really played back in the day um and yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. Yeah, I I I so I see Nefarian dying before Sinestra. I see, but uh, I see I, I see Chogul dying before Nefarian. Uh, the thing is, it's so it's so weird. Like some of the the bosses that are the first bosses in the raids are actually more difficult than the end bosses. You know, like Chogul is is the last. It's not the last boss because Celestia is the real last boss, but you know, like Chogul's fucking easy compared to I don't know even Magmore, like in 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 Blackwing Descent, which is like the 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 one of the first bosses. Depends what way you go, but like yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I I I I just don't know if there'll be a full clear in the first week, depending on how it launches. I was trying to see, did it open up right away an original Kata? Like, day one, you could go into the raids, so we might have that whole 10 days to prep and get full Priebus this time around, so it, making it easier to go in there the first week that it's it's opened? Or I know, but I, I think we delayed? should, I, even if it weren't delayed, I, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I was trying to look it up. I couldn't but remember. It, 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 I, it, I, I can't quite remember. I hope it is, though. Like, like the pre-raid pre-raid gear in 
with everything that Subtle just said, you know, going in and like doing archaeology, getting your reps up, doing all your heroics. Like that, that that's a big part of the fun. So like I hope that's not lost. Where it's like you're ding and then you've got like the the world like top world guilds just going straight in after getting to eighty five and all that content is like wasted. I know it won't be wasted on most people because i like most people will still just go and do it, but uh, yeah, I, I prefer it was it was closed at launch. A good yeah, a good ten yeah, days. I think is I think it's a better way to do it. Cause, like it, it lets people enjoy the leveling experience and gearing experience more, like the pre pre abyss and everything. Cause you don't you don't feel like you're absolutely just racing to get right into that raid and then you know you're gonna immediately replace your gear and it you know may, it makes a lot of that dungeon gear irrelevant quickly so that's what they've been doing and i think it makes a lot of sense to keep doing that yeah i agree and now i'm kind of going back on what i said a minute ago because actually now i think about it the guilds that are bothered about it are probably already practicing on private servers doing all of the bosses in three four six yeah. gear yeah so yeah it probably will be done on day one yeah and i mean i'm ba- i'm sorry on uh beta too like presumably we're gonna get raid testing at some point and yeah, yeah. um guild, as usual guilds will go very hard on that too and i know for certain lots of guilds are already practicing all these raids on pt or on um on private servers too mm, yeah yeah that's the only downside that's why like, i'd kind of like them to do something a little bit out of the ordinary for the cat, you know, where it's like, hey, go and practice on private servers. That's great. You know, like if I was the dev of cat, I'd be like, yeah, go practice on private servers. Enjoy that. And then I would literally change the mechanic that Nefarian has the heroic completely, you know, as in where that it's be not because that's all it is. You know, all the bosses are the same, but Nefarian in Blackwing Descent just adds a mechanic to each fight. I'd be like, yeah, I just fucking change out completely. So they go in and they're like, right, this is what we're doing. We've got the perfect comp. Let's go. Boom. We wiped. What was that? Like, I've not seen that before. <laughs> like that. That would be yeah, so I good. Mean, the, yeah, they've been trying to like keep things a little bit more secret lately too. Because like obviously with season of discovery, that kind of kicked it all off. Where like, uh, you know, no PTR for it, trying to keep things hush hush, and then they sort of carried that into plunderstorm. Like, just tried to keep that on the download as much as they could. And they've been saying since the beginning, this is cattle with changes. So, like, if they did do something like that, they could just point to it. They could be like, hey, we said this was cattle with changes, and there it is. But that that would honestly be hilarious. I would, I think I'd be fine with that. Just, like, mix it up. Add, add like, one more mechanic that, like, changes the, each fight. Yeah, I, I I'd really be be down for that because yeah, like I'm I'm gonna go into the fights knowing, yeah, you know, yeah, knowing all the fights. So it does like take away from it a bit if they was to just surprise us with something that we're not expecting. Like yeah, that would be cool. Uh, anything else? Go. Did you want to talk? Oh, you done stat pro uh... for prop? Do you want to do ret and? I don't, but uh, you might know. <laughs> I could just pull some random prios out of my ass right quick if you want me to. Yeah, Rhett, you've got uh, strength, obviously the best, and then <laughs> yeah, well, you was onto a winner. Haste you is was amazing. You was doing yep, well. Yep. Uh, you uh, was you was doing well until you got to haste. Oh <laughs> uh, fuck it, mastery. Like <laughs> yeah, I, early on I'd say mastery. Uh, I think hey, haste haste will be. Very, it's the same as um, Feral. You know, Feral is like very crit mastery, and then crit haste is actually really strong in Firelands because of the regen. And obviously, haste for Rep Paladin, yeah, brings the cooldown of um, of Crusader Strike and Divine Storm down. Um, but I'd say as a, as a rule, like strength is number one. Like, uh, and I'd say that for probably pretty much any any strength user, and then getting hit capped, expertise capped. And then I say it's it's it, everything else from there is very close, but mastery oh, oh, ultimately because mastery just increases all of your abilities damage. You, you know by uh, let me hang on, let me go my ret spec and I'll tell you. Uh, 
So Templar's Verdict, Crusader Strike, Divine Storm deals 17% additional damage, and then for each point of mastery, it's another 2% damage. So like your main abilities, like it kind of makes it a no-brainer when you're getting 2% extra damage from each point of mastery. That's not like for every mastery you've got, obviously for, for every 1% mastery that you get. Um, yeah, so then mastery, uh, and then from there, crit, haste fucking it barely even matters but you want to get yeah you want strength you want hit cap expertise cap and then obviously you're just going for as much mastery as you can get but then as you start getting geared where you're just going to have like if you can go for lots of haste mastery that's going to be valuable but then obviously crit is valuable because you know obviously the more you crit the more you keep vengeance up um I'd say early on, mastery, crit, haste. So ignoring the obvious. So you've got strength, hit, expertise, and then I'd say mastery, crit, haste. And then I'd say as the uh, as you get towards Dragon Soul, I'd say mastery, haste, crit. Uh, and for holy. Holy's weird, man. Because, like, if you were to actually, like, look at a guide and be like, right, what, what do I need as a holy paladin? I... What, what what you need and what I need could be two different things. Because if you can't manage your mana pool very well, then you need lots and lots of spirit. Do you know what I mean? Intellect is going to be number one, of course. Um, but then you could go int spirit mastery in that order, or you could go int mastery spirit. Because... Like obviously mastery is gonna when when you're healing, it's gonna do lots like like lots more in terms of absorb. Um, but then you could go in spirit haste because the, the faster you're healing, the same way with wrath. Obviously, as a as a holy paladin, going haste is better than crit. Crit's going to give you mana return, but haste is still better for output. Um, I I I wouldn't actually say I I, I would I'd be scared to say exactly what what you want as a holy paladin. Because me personally, I go for a lot of haste. As in, I go in haste and then everything else. I don't really give a shit about anything. I know I'm not going to go home. So I'd rather cast fast while I need it. So I'd go in haste, spirit, mastery, crit. That would be what I'd do. All right. The only other note that I uh, put down while we've been doing this is, uh, do we want to touch on like tier 11 tier set bonuses? Like, are they good? How impactful do you guys think that they'll be or they're all wanna, shit. is that too much no we, we can touch on <laughs> yeah. them we can touch on but they that like i think overall tier 11 set bonuses for every class of shit but we can touch on them have you looked at that yet so i can say I, I just gotta pull it up really quick yeah. Yeah. um i think that's the four piece one where uh guardian of ancient kings lasts longer yeah 50 percent increases the duration yeah of the guardian so of apparently kings. that's gonna be from what i hear insane for ret like ret pallies are gonna want this and they pre-pop guardian uh with the prot set bonus pre-pull then they swap to their regular gear and then pull the boss so they get like the increased duration on guardian like before the pull happens that's what i've been hearing for red at least um and then i mean a longer shield wall like it's it's good for prot i mean generally you're using your wall for like a specific like burst moment though and i mean having that extra duration probably doesn't really get you to an another burst moment but um i mean extra damage reduction for longer it's never like a bad thing for sure Let's see. Um, do you do you have like the set bonuses handy? You could link. I'm trying to pull them up on Wowhead. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the two set is increase your damage done by your Crusader Strike by ten percent for the prot one. For the prot one, yeah. I mean that that's great. That's like one of our top damaging abilities. So that's fantastic. Uh, then the ret one, it looks like increases your damage done by your Templar's verdict ability by 10%. The four set is Avenging Wrath lasts five seconds longer. That's for the ret one, you said? Yeah. And then. Okay, the, yeah. I, I don't have any clue about that one. <laughs> 
that Scotty's all pixelated for me. Are you good, Scotty? Yeah, you yeah, still? yeah. I'm looking at what you. Okay, what okay, you okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So what did you say it was? I'm looking at it now. For for Rhett? For Rhett, yeah. Uh, as long as it's the reinforced Sephirian battle armor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the wrong. That's one. right. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Increases the damage done by your Templar's verdict ability by 10% for the two set, and then four set. It's avenging wrath lasts five seconds longer. No, no, that's 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 wrong. Your in Inquisition yeah, ability's it, it, duration is calculated as if you have one additional holy power. Is what the four set is. You're looking at retail, aren't you? What I'm looking at. Uh, it's just uh, Wildpedia tier eleven, I guess. That's why I was yeah, confused Wild when you're saying the set bonuses. I'm sat here okay, like okay. <laughs> that's not what I'm looking at. What 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 are you looking at? But the the prop was <laughs> correct, but the that one was wrong. Um, I don't know. Uh, let, let I'm me... trying to pull the pro one up. Um, yeah, it looks like the pro one's correct. Uh, ten percent more Crusader strike damage and fifty percent increased duration on Guardian of Ancient Kings. So yeah, I mean, the ten percent more Crusader damage that's fantastic. And we talked about the Guardian of Ancient Kings. Solid. Well, I'm scared to say what the holy one is because that might be wrong. So, Scott, do you have the holy set up there? Uh, I'm I'm gonna tell you right now. Hang on, I'm looking up my holy gear. Um, so so Rhett, we'll start with Rhett. So yeah, Rhett was okay. increases the damage done by your Templar's verdict by ten percent. Two set ten percent extra damage with one of your high ability, like, like high damage abilities is good. Uh, it's not your highest damage ability. Like it's decent, um, and your Inquisition ability duration is calculated as if you had one additional holy power. Eh, again, like you're you're not gonna gear for the four set just to get the four set. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not difficult keeping that up. Uh, and holy increases the critical strike chance. I could put this on screen so people can actually see what I'm looking at. Uh, for holy. Increases the critical strike chance of your holy light spell by five percent. No, wait, no, ignore that because I'm looking at I'm looking at Firelands. Maybe I will just go and look at what I'm actually meant to be looking at. Uh, have I even? I must have fucking tier ten on this character somewhere, but it might be in the bank. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, the fucking four set for Firelands is insane. Uh, Valor Quartermaster on the mm. 410. Fucking hell, why is it so difficult to find it? I want to find it where it's actually like I know it's accurate rather than looking at a database, but it's not on yeah, here anymore. Would... It's not on here anymore because would... it's fucking because it's bloody. Um. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Because it's fire uh Because it's dragon soul. Uh, I can't see the old shit. Uh, but I can now. So, uh, the the holy set. Oh yeah, shit. The two sets, nice. Uh, it uh increases the critical strike chance of your holy light spell by five percent. Five percent crit with holy light is nice. But the four set grants three hundred uh five hundred and forty spirit for six seconds when you cast holy shock. Like, that's really nice. You know, 540 spirit. Obviously, you're, you're literally going to keep that up 100% of the time. Because Holy holy Shock has only got uh, a six-second cooldown anyway. Let me just go to it so I can actually show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so, literally, it's your four set is 540 spirit. Like, that's huge. Um, but, I mean... When I say it's huge, that's a bit of an exaggeration. You know, it, it's decent. The same way the ret one, like the ret, the, the ret set bonus is like nice. You know, 10% with Templar's Verdict, Inquisition getting like extra uptime. If you're a good ret paladin, you don't really need the extra few seconds on Inquisition. You'll keep it up anyway. Like two set, definitely, as ret. Uh, and four set as holy. Uh, I don't know if Flo's still watching, but if Flo is watching, I think he'd probably agree that if you can just get better statted gear from somewhere else, 
you're, you're not going to need you're not going to need the constant 540 spirit But then, on the basis, you're going to upgrade the gear and get it to 372 by getting heroic tokens. Maybe you would use it. Did that help, Go? Uh, it helped tremendously. I'm, I'm glad we covered that. Good. So what about incursions? So incursions. <laughs> All right, so after no! you've gotten to no! that portal I no! talked about earlier in Ashenvale, you're going to want to go to a little quest giver. And then... It's an amazing event where all the NPCs, after you pick the quest up, are stealthed. So you have to know exactly where they are and run to them with your group and hope that world PvP doesn't happen. Because that's going to slow down your XP per hour, and nobody likes that. That's not fun. Although you level as fast as possible. Although I watched you for hours, and I watched you running past Alliance and not even hitting them. So I'm guessing there's not a lot of world PvP going on, on the basis that I was watching my world PvP boomy, not even hitting the alliance like a pussy. Well, oh, now that well, I'm like a bar away from fifty. So tonight I might go there and just wreak havoc and start an absolute massacre at the event. Uh, before we continue on with the cataclysm talk, can we just touch on why you didn't actually hit anyone? There was alliance running around, yeah, horde running around. Them. You're all flagged. No one's touching each other. Like, what's yeah, that about? I wanted XP. Like. That's, that would slow me down from getting my experience, and oh. I'm trying to get that 35-minute level everybody's talking about. Mine was like 45, 50, but... Well, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad you was on a, a PvP server where you could really enjoy that. Like, I, I am pleased. Fucking not. I'll enjoy it tonight. We're not talking about cat. sod. Stop. I was joking. You bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, okay. So you, you, you bought up tier sets... So tier 11, not that great, but tier 12 is fucking banging. It's a bit early to worry about Firelands gear, but the, the Firelands sets are, are good. You're talking for most melee classes, it's just like you do 10% extra damage. You know, for a two set. Uh, so it, it does go up, yeah, yeah, in, in decent amounts. The, uh, yeah, the, the tier 11... Same way as Nax, like the Nax tier sets weren't anything where you got them and was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. You know, they don't really change things up a great deal. Uh, anything else? Paladin wise? Uh, like, are there any <laughs> reputations that you need to no, worry it's about? Up, man. Sorry, what was it? Are there any reputations you need to worry about? Like, as soon as you um, get 85? Yeah, I mean, you pretty much want everything. Um, you want, like, exalted everything except for uh, Earthen Ring. You just need revered for your helm enchant, but you have some sort of prebis from every every faction. So you're going to be... The main one to focus on will be the Tolbarad exalted because that's uh, gated by daily quests. So all the other factions, you have like rep tabards you can put on. You can just farm as much as you want in heroics. But the Tolbarad one, like you really got to make sure you're doing your dailies every day. Uh, make sure you're participating in some of the battles. There's also this annoying mechanic that I hope they change where after a battle, there's new daily quest givers that come out and some of there's like um, three different sets that are like randomly available. So to like maximize doing all your dailies, you have to like go to each, uh, go to Tolbrad after each battle and like check what the dailies are, see if they're new ones or not. And it, it's like an RNG fiesta and ho hopefully they'll just change it. And just as soon as your faction wins, just all of the dailies are available to you. I think that would be a good change because um, like kind of your best tank trinket, the mirror of broken images is... Uh, what you're looking for from Tolbarad. It's a mastery trinket, like we talked about before, best tank stat. And then it has an on use, one minute cooldown on use to like increase your resist. I, I don't remember the exact number, but it's like 400 increased resist. So any fight that has resistible magic damage, which there are a lot of them, you pop that one minute cooldown, it's going to significantly reduce how much magic damage you take. This is just like a really, really important trinket to get for any tank. It's like your Syndragosa, Syndragosa trinket in it. But, but, but no stamp, but mastery instead. Yeah, it's like, yeah, big trinket. 
So while you're doing toll, Brad, is there any reason that prop pallies need to look at resilience gear from PVP at all? Or is that kind of like a thing of the past? Nope. That is completely a thing of the past. Um, resilience just reduces your damage taken from players now. It doesn't have anything to do with crit and all tanks now get passive crit immunity regardless. So yeah, uh, PVP gear is pretty much completely uninteresting to us now like the only time it would really be relevant is if um you're way behind on gear like you know it's you know dragon soul phase or something and you have like 346 gear and you have an opportunity to get some like 390 whatever pvp gear like maybe you'd use that and like reforge but um just if you're playing each phase like it's unlikely you'd ever really look to pvp gear now and you want to bring up ferrazane i'm assuming go uh i was just answering della they asked oh. uh the, the stone faction is the only one to give the shoulder enchants forgot her name yeah yeah uh, I, was just, I think that's her right yeah ferrazane yeah so ferrazane rep will be important for everyone except for if you're inscription obviously then well, it doesn't matter to you whatsoever, but uh, although no, it won't. Uh, at Revered, you can get a three, four, six ring. Like it's kind of, kind of neither here nor there. But yeah, mo most people will want Exalt with Ferrazane, and as long as you quest in Deep Home, you know you'll you'll get to honored bare minimum to be able to get a uh, Tabard, which you can get from Friendly, and then you'll just use it while you're spamming Heroic. So. I logged into the beta just to like see what her name was. I'm in deep hole there because I tested the quest earlier to see if we could get past that bugged one, and it's still bugged. Because <laughs> I want to finish deep hole like the zone, and still can't do that on the beta. Blizzard are busy at the moment. I don't know if you know, but there's a little 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 incursion game out called uh, Steam. <laughs> oh my God, Scotty. <laughs> We uh, need a, a, sh a shot game every time Scotty brings up incursions. <laughs> well, I was looking forward to that shit, and it's wank. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? So uh, we might have to do a, a, a second Paladin episode and get subtle back on where we can really dig into, you know, things a little bit deeper, like we did with Paladin, uh, with Druid. You know, we've done Druid in two. We should do Paladin in two. Because I feel like so far it's been a really yeah. good overview, everything we spoke about. Um, but I'm sure like there's some, there's a lot more I want to talk about holy personally and Rhett and I'm sure subtle like, there's probably a lot as well. <laughs> yeah, I'd be down to do another for sure. We're only at like three and a half hours in or something. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying like, let's stop. I'm just saying like, is there anything without going too deep at the moment that like, is there anything people need to know that they don't know? You know, like I, I feel like we've covered a, a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the basics, a lot of the overview of what to expect from a paladin in, in, in Kata. Oh yeah. Another small thing is, uh, Your penis. are kind of yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Damn it, Scotty. Hey, oh, at least you haven't converted subtle to like take shots at me too, because th that was Scotty's like main goal back when we started this podcast months ago. He he would just like joke me and try to get our guests to like join him and joking me and it hasn't happened for a while oh no 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 no, no, no. for not doing jo it jo jo josh took shots at you on uh, <laughs> the last episode oh yeah, yeah. He, he didn't say he didn't take hardly any encouragement whatsoever he was well in there <laughs> but uh druid are idle slot changes and the relic slot changes hmm. slightly for for paladin as well so is there any any big things with that? It's kind of more like a stat stick now instead of granting you like an ability bonus. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just stats for everybody now. The relic slot, no, no unique effects anymore. So, uh, come pre patch. Most um, most guys have been using the two forty five uh, Libra of Valiance. Um, most prop guys. Um, so. You're just gonna want to switch to the two sixty four one because you're just gonna get more stats from it. But yeah, that's that's 
pretty much the main thing. Uh, they do have prismatic sockets on them too. Um, so you can put whatever gem you want in it. You won't lose like a socket bonus or anything. All right. That's, I think that's everything I can think of, Scotty. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, in terms of general overview, I, I mean, I will not even going to go as deep as set bonuses or anything yet, to be fair. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, oh uh, I mean, if we were to just do one more slight topic when we're talking about how the classes play, I, I think, yeah, people really are gonna are gonna be pushed out of their comfort zone when the pre patch hits, like every paladin. Not not just ret, not holy, not like, like all all three specs are gonna be like, oh shit, this is this is a bit different. You know, prot is very much um like Sol said, you know, you know, as a tank in Kata, you're you're trying to look after yourself as much as you're wanting the healer to look after you. As ret, you've got a lot more procs to look out for, you make a mistake in your rotation and you will feel punished. And as a holy paladin, like if you think you can just pump big heals and you know, you're going to have a good time. You're not like you're literally going to be um, and you can't even rely on innovates or anything anymore because, uh, well, you'll get five percent of your mana, which is fairly fucking shit. It's just going to be it. a wake, a big wake up call when, when, when it changes. Yeah, yeah, you love it because now you don't need to innovate anyone; you just innovate yourself. It's not. Yeah. Well, wasted on someone you'd be else. on your priest you'd be on your pally you're on your mage you're asking for innervates on every class you play scotty so now i don't have to worry about that <laughs> uh, not not so much on the not so much on the on the no no you're right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i was like which <laughs> class is it gonna try to pick right here <laughs> <laughs> yeah just give me innervate uh so yeah i do think is that this is going to be a, a real big adjustment period but I think let's do let's do a part two. Let's get subtle on. We'll we'll discuss between ourselves when we can then go into a lot more detail into the specs. And to be fair, I think prot is the one that we want to dig into the most. Um, because I, I do genuinely feel like it's the one that actually changes the most. Especially when we're talking about like stat priorities and like how it plays and it's not the flavor of the month tank anymore. You know, you're going from like where Everybody wants to be a prop pally in Raft to now being like, oh, this might not be as good a time as I was having before, you know. So we'll, we'll do we'll do an episode. We might we might have to actually just do every class in two. I think <laughs> that looks like how it's going. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds great to me. Cool. Okay. Well, go lead us out. Uh. If you're interested in balance druid stuff, you can find me at youtube.com slash at classic go C L A S S I C G H O. It's oh, awful. Sorry. It's all incursion, like season of discovery content. It's amazing. <laughs> but uh the, I stream on kick every now and then, and I'm usually listening to like metal music over there. So it's it's a vibe stream if you ever find me on kick because you're watching Scotty and then Scotty ends his stream and you're like, Oh, who else is streaming on kick? I, I stream a little bit on kick there too. So Check me out, and uh, if you're interested in Paladin or possibly DK, other tanks, then uh, Subtle, where can everybody find you? Uh, YouTube and Twitch, SubtleFW, and mainly going to be focusing on Blood DK as like my main, but I'm still going to be making uh, prop value content too, and prop worry as well. I may get into Feral on top of that, but that's kind of my uh, priority order. Basically, Blood Decay, Prop Value, Prop Warrior, Feral, in terms of what content I'll be doing. But I will be playing it all the tanks. So eventually, hopefully, there will be videos and stuff for everything. What about Rogue Tank? Oh, that's Season of Discovery, which we have um, our next Season of Discovery episode on Wednesday, Scott. And I know he's looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Mate, I mean, I've Way got to I've hype got, him up, brother. <laughs> I, I, I've got to at least play some phase three before then. Otherwise, I'm going to be sat there like, well, you can sort the guests out and everything for, for that. Like, like, I'll turn up. We, I'll, I'll be you. Out, yeah. We, oh, yeah, we've got Hammer. Shit, yeah, yeah, we've already yeah. got it. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to be you on that episode and I'm going to sit there and say nothing. 
<laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'll, and, uh, I'll get to speak during a show. This is going to be amazing. Yeah, you and Hammer can talk about uh, about sod, and I'll occasionally say something moronic, and then we really feel like we've switched roles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so like honestly, it. mate, it's been fucking amazing you having here, uh, having you here, and yeah, we will do a second episode where we yeah we dig in a bit more into the detail. I feel like you know an overview that lasted what three hours? Is it nearly three hours? Uh, almost four. Oh, almost four. All right, my maths is not very good because I'm English. Um, but like nearly four hours of just an overview is probably quite a lot. So. Yeah, we'll get you back on. Um, I mean, if you're free the same time next week, that would be perfect. Um, yeah, I think I will be. I'll get back to you on that, but I think so. Cool. Well, in which case, then we can just carry this on next week and uh, we'll see uh, see where we end up. So thank you, everyone in chat. Anyone who's super chatted, joined as a member, um, maybe liked or enjoyed uh, Go's fucking incursion talks. I don't know. You'd be alone there, but... Either way, it's been a good time. As long as there's one. I don't think there's one, to be honest with you, mate. Uh, Probably not. No, I don't think so. Uh, goodbye all. Take care. Peace out.